Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto had the legacy of Almighty Taimanen. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this. Then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. In the Kanoha Academy, the students of various classes gathered around their respective classes sparring rings, many of them chatting excitedly amongst themselves because of the presence of special guests. Dude, I think she looked at me. I bet I'm gonna get picked. Spoke the form of one Kiba in Yuzuka as he leered at a female figure in a skin-tight bodysuit that left nothing to the imagination. The woman in question was standing next to the Chunin teachers, Haruka and Mizuki, observing the class bars and occasionally speaking to or asking them questions. If you keep on acting like a creep, there's no way she'll pick you. Spoke the form of Naruto Uzumaki as he nudged his classmate in the ribs even so, he couldn't entirely blame Kiba for his excitement. For today, a number of Taimanin were present at the academy. The story goes that after the Kaiubi attack about 15 years ago, some of its yakai still remained behind even after its sealing. The Noha's research and development branch captured many samples of the remnant yakai and began to research ways to make stronger and more powerful ninjas to combat future threats and potential Bijuuj and Churiki attacks. About 12 or so years ago, the results of said research bore fruit as the R&D department found a means to implant the Kaiubi's yakai into others. Many volunteers were gathered for the procedure, tragically a vast majority of the male participants died during the procedure or were corrupted into a berserker state by the yakai in their bodies and had to be put down. For reasons unknown, females seemed to be far more compatible for the Kaiubi's yakai and thus had far higher chances of survival, although the procedure still held the aforementioned risks. The subjects who survived became known as the Taimanin, elite Kinoichi, who are said to possess the strength of 50 or even 100 jonin all on their own, and thanks to the yakai in their bodies, they were able to unlock certain abilities that regular humans and even bloodline users don't have access to. However, despite their strengths, there are also drawbacks. After the procedure, their chakra networks change and are unable to reproduce natural chakra anymore, thus preventing them from using jutsu technique safely. If they use too much of their yakai at one time for using jutsu or in combat, they run the risk of becoming feral beasts, whose only instinct is to either destroy everything in sight and or violate anyone within reach. To counteract this fatal flaw, a special procedure was added that allowed Taimanin to form a bond with a selected partner, sometimes referred to as marriage by the Taimanin themselves, and use their partner's chakra to empower themselves. To be chosen as a Taimanin's partner is considered a tremendous honor, and there also comes numerous special privileges with it. As for how a Taimanin chooses a partner, it is said that they can sense when someone compatible for them is nearby, thus Taimanin are allowed to choose anyone who they deem compatible as their partners. Hence the Taimanin's presence at the academy, they were scouting for viable partners. Due to how few in number they were and because of low volunteers for the yakai implantation procedure in recent years, it was fairly common for a Taimanin to be older than their chosen partner. Supposedly, Taimanin had to be careful in choosing their partners due to the taxing demands for the chakra they sorely needed, so naturally people with low chakra reserves were often ignored by the Taimanin, hence why they are almost constantly seeking potential partners. However, there was one Taimanin in particular that everyone wanted to be chosen by a Sagiagawa. Famously known as the Almighty Taimanin. She has never once been beaten in combat and is confirmed to be one of, if not the strongest Taimanin ever created. She was as cool as a cucumber and was considered to be one of the most beautiful women in Kanoha she was practically a celebrity. She often appeared on TV for interviews, gave motivational speeches, generously donated to good charities, and her face often appeared on countless magazines who unanimously named her most desirable woman in Kanoha. Civilians adored her, shinobi respected her. She was practically the holy grail for anyone lucky enough to chosen for marriage. It should also be noted that it is exceptionally common for a Taimanin and their chosen partner to become lovers, which is probably why Taimanin refer to their partnerships as marriage. Though the lover's part was probably what had Kiba so excited. Meanwhile, as the Yuzumaki mused to himself, Asagi was watching the class bars with a bored expression, watching a pair of fangirl-type students engaging in a pitiful schoolyard-type scuffle that involved scratching and a lot of hair pulling. These are supposed to be the future of Kanoha's military, a sad future indeed. She thought to herself while shaking her head in dismay. She was here to find a worthy partner, not watch these cringeworthy spars. On a positive note she could send somebody in the crowd that could be a good match for her, but she couldn't pinpoint their exact location far too many people for her to get a proper reading. What about Sasu-kun? He's strong and talented and is the top student of the entire academy. He'd make a perfect partner for you, Asagi-san. Spoke the form of Aruka as he gave a charming smile that made bile rise up in her throat. I have already been introduced to Sasuke-san a million times. 
I am not interested in him. What a Taemin seeks in a partner varies from case to case. She explained calmly while suppressing the urge to toss him out of the village however if he kept annoying her, she would have no choice but to do so to get him out of her face, and then she'd make her apologies to the Hokage later. Her teal-colored eyes continued to scan the students until finally her eyes settled on a certain blonde with whisker-like markings on his face, who seemed to be thinking to himself about something. He broke out his thoughts when he noticed her looking at him, and then gave a simple and friendly wave towards her, making her smile and wave back in turn. Huh not a bad sign. Many have, in the past, would mouth pick me or something like that at the first opportunity this one seemed far more humble and polite. She had heard stories about him from both the sand dame and the populace at large. She had heard of his lonely childhood and how he was often treated by the villagers due to their grudge against the Biju, and poor Naruto was the scapegoat of their anger. She had also heard stories of his many pranks and his ability to outrun and evade entire platoons and squads of Chunin who tried to chase him down, despite the fact he was still an academy student, which showed his impressive stamina and agility. Very interesting. That one. With the whisker markings. Who is he? Asagi asked the scarred Chunin, who, at the mention of whisker markings, instantly frowned and made a face as if he'd bitten into a lemon. Him? Naruto Uzumaki. Though I don't think you want anything to do with him. He's a local troublemaker and is the worst student in the class and has already failed the graduation exam twice. He's nowhere near worthy of being partners with a Taemanin, least of all you Asagi-san. Iruka answered in an even tone, however it was very easy to detect the venomous undertones in his voice. The Bluenet scoffed in dismissal as she spoke in a calm manner I'll be the judge of that for myself. Bring him here. I wish to talk to him. At a request, the scarred Chunin jaw dropped as he glanced between the forms of Asagi and of Naruto in the crowd of students. With great reluctance, he sighed and obeyed since it was the law to provide a Taemanin with whatever they wanted or needed without question. He stomped over towards the whiskered teen and then pointed at him while speaking in a gruff voice you. Naruto. Come on, Asagi wants to have a word with you. As soon as those words left his mouth, everyone that heard them jaw dropped and stared at the whiskered teen who seemed equally stunned by this request. He wouldn't have ever, in a million years, expected to be asked for by name of a famous Taemanin. They all stared at him as murmurs started to rise up amongst the crowd. Some seemed to think that Naruto may have done something to offend the famed Taemanin. Others wondered if she was legit considering him for marriage. Finally, others were spitting out words of spite and jealous that Asagi had asked for him. Swallowing nervously, he broke away from the crowd and made his way over towards the almighty Taemanin, with a disgruntled and grumbling Aruka following close behind, though Naruto caught something that sounded like what is she thinking? From the scar Chunin. After a few moments, Naruto found himself standing in front of the legendary Taemin in herself, somehow she seemed even more beautiful up close, and the blonde felt his heart beat faster before dropping into his stomach. He hello. He managed to speak out, just barely which earned a small giggle from the Taemin. My reputation precedes me as usual. No need to be nervous. I won't bite. I just want to talk. You're Naruto Uzumaki, am I correct? She asked for confirmation trying her best to help him relax, this certainly wasn't the first time a potential candidate became a gibbering mess while in her presence. She supposed that great beauty and fame had that effect on people. Dh that's right. Naruto Uzumaki, at your service. Is there something I can do for you? He asked politely, his voice quickly recovering as he tried to rein in and contain his nervousness. The brunette ran a hand through her hair and then crossed her arms beneath her impressive bust. I just want to ask you some questions, maybe ask you to perform a simple task or two for me. First question, how old are you and why do you want to be a shinobi? She asked as though she were conducting an interview, her eyes staring deeply into him as she seemed to be observing his every move, action, and reaction. The blonde pursed his lips in thought, it felt as though she were testing him somehow, perhaps trying to get a read on him and his personality. He decided it would be best to just answer her honestly and replied 15 Asagi-san, and to get stronger. At that, she quirked up an eyebrow. Many students would say something like fame and fortune or some other shallow response this one was different. To what end? Why do you want to get stronger? She asked in a slightly more stern tone which made the whiskered teen flinch a bit either he said something that upset her, or what he said caught her interest. He hoped it was the latter. Either way, she was definitely taking this seriously. Different reasons. To protect myself, to protect others that can't defend themselves, to protect those I care or may care about in the future that kind of stuff. He answered in a sincere voice, then he noticed it for only a brief moment, but he definitely saw a soggy smile for a split second before she must have caught herself and returned to a stern and serious face. Are you willing to commit? Being married to a Taemanin isn't a cakewalk. I will expect a lot out of you, and I will not tolerate laziness and half-efforts. 
She spoke, her eyes boring into the blonde as he felt as if she were trying to peer into his very soul, scanning him for even the slightest hint of dishonesty. I am and if you don't believe me, I'd be willing to prove myself to you, Asagi-san. He spoke in a tone of determination. At his response Asagi smiled softly as she accepted his response, finding herself pleased with how he responded. He was honest, sincere, and wanted to defend others. Yes, he was an ideal candidate for her. I have but one final request for you I need to perform a small test of your chakra reserves. Asagi spoke and then pulled a small handheld device from seemingly thin air. It was a fist-sized device with a finger-shaped indentation in the center and a small monitor on it as well. Asagi then explained, this is a special device we tame and use to measure the chakra levels of our potential partners. Please place your finger inside and channel some chakra inside, it'll then calculate your chakra levels accordingly. The Yuzumaki nodded in understanding since that made sense, a Taemanin would need someone who could provide plenty of chakra for them. He obeyed her instructions and placed his finger in the appropriate slot and channeled a small amount of chakra inside. The device came to life with a loud series of beeps and various numbers started flashing before Asagi's eyes. When the blonde had removed his finger, the Taemanin was surprised to see that the numbers were climbing higher and higher. Her eyes started to widen as there appeared to be no signs of the numbers stopping, until at last an error message flashed a few times before the chakra measurement device grew hot and then exploded in the palm of her hand and burst into flames. Causing her to instantly drop it as she recoiled in shock with Naruto standing there equally surprised with an expression that screamed what the hell. Upon seeing this side Aruka suddenly leapt forward and shouted Naruto. What the hell did you do? You dare try and pull a prank on a Taemanin. What are you? Stupid. At his accusation, the blonde raised up his hands in surrender and tried to explain that it wasn't a prank but an accident, however the Chunin refused to hear him and instead began chewing out the poor boy. Their words were lost to Asagi's ears as she stared at the device as it was still engulfed in flames. The only logical conclusion was that his chakra levels were so far off the charts that the device was unable to process the needed information, melted down from the inside and overloaded. Never before had she seen such a result yet it also made a certain kind of sense, since he was the Kaiubi's container, of course, his chakra levels wouldn't be normal or average in nature, she couldn't afford to allow such a rare prize of this nature to slip through her fingers, and she could already sense that she and him had a strong compatibility rate. He was perfect. She was broken from her musing when she heard the Chunin Aruka say I'm so sorry for the trouble Asagi-san. I knew he wouldn't be a good partner for you. He won't bother you ever again. The scarred Chunin then proceeded to drag away the whiskered teen who violently struggled and thrashed around in the Chunin's grip. Boy. Ligo you bastard. I told you that it was an accident. I didn't do anything wrong. Naruto protested angrily for being accused of something he didn't do, Haruka then glared harshly at him, red in the face, and seemed ready to use his signature big head jutsu to shout at the boy. But was stopped when Asagi placed a hand on Haruka's wrist, which caused both the Chunin and Yuzumaki to fall silent and look towards the blue net. Her face was an unreadable mask as she stared at the Chunin, getting the silent message, he reluctantly released the whiskered teen from his grip. Meanwhile in the background, Naruto's entire class were watching in dead silence, wondering what the famed Taemanin would do with Naruto. Most of them believed that she was about to punish him, but instead she stated loud enough for all to hear I'll take him. Three words. Three words was all it took to launch the class into complete pandemonium, as everyone could only express shock and disbelief that the most famous and powerful Taemanin in all of Konoha had chosen the dead last of all people for a partner. There couldn't possibly be a more mismatched pair if there ever was one. Almost every boy in the crowd glared at Naruto in pure hatred and jealousy that he had been picked over the rest of them, and now he was going to be married to the famed almighty Taemanin herself. He would have access to the best training, the best equipment, the best everything. Now it would all be his for the taking. Hiroka was one of the few to remain silent, his face having changed from a dark crimson to a deathly white in the span of a few seconds, from the shocked and pained expression on his face, it almost appeared that he had shat out his own heart. Be what? Was the only intelligent reply that the blonde Yuzumaki could mutter, he wondered if he had perhaps misheard her, however she gave him a reassuring smile, and then bowed to one knee with her hands placed above her chest, a gesture that Taemanin performed when they had chosen their partner and were about to propose marriage. Naruto Yuzumaki, I can sense that you are kind, capable, and loyal. Traits that I find very much desirable in a partner. Would you accept me, Asagi Agawa, as your partner in marriage? She asked him, proposing to the blonde with an endearing and heartfelt smile. Naruto swallowed a lump in his throat, a large part of him still doubting his ears, however this was happening. The Taemanin was proposing marriage to him. She wanted him as her partner. How in the hell could he refuse? I do was the only response he could give since he didn't trust his own voice at the moment. 
Asagi then smiled even wider, her eyes gleaming as she nodded in gratitude. From this day forward we are partners and are henceforth married. Under my care, I shall protect you with my life and ensure that you will want for nothing. Asagi spoke and then she approached the blonde and planted her lips to his own. His eyes widened as he felt the softness and warmth of her lips against his own. Never in his life would he imagine that he'd have his first kiss with the famed almighty Taemin in his life. After a few moments, she broke off the kiss and said our marriage contract is now sealed with our kiss. I look forward to working with, living with, and training with you from today on. At her words, Naruto felt joy and ecstasy fill his heart at the prospect of bonding with and getting to know Usagi, not only that, but he could now leave behind the academy, since being chosen by a Taemin was an automatic ticket for graduation. As of now, he was a legal shinobi. No. Asagi-san. Don't do this. That little Brad isn't worthy of being your partner. He's the worst student in the entire academy. You should have chosen Sazaruka shouted angrily, but was silenced when Asagi roughly clapped him on the shoulder and squeezed around the collarbone tightly. Which resulted in a crunching noise that made the Chunin let out a silent scream. She then gave a soft giggle and sickly sweet smile as she led the Chunin away from both Naruto and the other children as she whispered to him, listen here, haruka san I've made my choice. Now, I've a mind to gut you right here, in front of all your students, and I wouldn't even be punished for it. However, since I don't want to potentially traumatize them, I shall restrain myself. But, if you continue to irritate me I'll kill you and make my apologies to the children, their parents, and the Hokage later. It's your call. While she didn't like to use threats or violence so casually this man was seriously irritating her, and if he didn't shut up then she really would kill him and be done with it, instead of suffering further and listening to that whiny voice of his. Iruka swallowed a lump in his throat and noted that her free hand was gripping her katana rather tightly, showing that she was prepared to kill him just as she had threatened. Legally speaking, Taemin held absolute power in Kanoha as authorized by the Hokage due to their fighting prowess and contributions to the village. If Asagi wanted to, she could most definitely kill him for even the most petty of reasons, or even no reason at all, and she wouldn't face any repercussions. Nod your head. Say whatever you want Asagi-san. Thank you Asagi-san and walk away little man. You're not as important as you think you are. She spoke in a venomous tone, a clicking sound coming from her scabbard as she began to slowly draw her blade for emphasis. Without any other choice, and with his instincts for self-preservation kicking in, Iruka rapidly nodded his head and squeaked out whatever you want Asagi-san. Thank you Asagi-san. The Taemin gave a satisfied smirk and released the Chunin, allowing him to walk away and almost break out into a run as he tried to distance himself from her. Asagi sighed and approached Naruto and said Naruto you come with me. You're done with this place. We'll swing by your apartment to get your personal belongings, then you're coming with me to my home. Nah, that's okay. I don't really have any personal belongings anyway, though I guess I should pick up my clothes. Naruto added the last part as an afterthought, which caused the almighty Taemin to shake her head negatively. No need. If it is clothes you need, I'll buy you some later. If there's nothing you wish to collect from your home, then we can just go straight to mine then. Follow me Naruto-kun, it is important for Ataman and their partner to bond and get to know each other as quickly as possible. Asagi spoke, prompting her new partner to nod in agreement. Thanks Asagi-san. You're really nice. No wonder you're so popular. Naruto spoke, his words making her blush a bit. Most people often complimented her for her beauty or battle prowess, not many would compliment her for simply being nice. Oh yes she was going to like Naruto a lot. As they left the academy grounds, other Taemin who were scouting for partners saw them leaving together and shouted their congratulations to both Naruto and Asagi, meanwhile, almost everyone else were glaring at the Uzumaki in jealousy. As they walked through the village streets, many people looked at Asagi in awe and admiration and occasionally lust, but then they noticed who she was walking with and then would engage in frantic whispering as they gossiped of this new development. Every so often, a photographer would peek out from around a corner or from an alleyway to catch a snapshot of the duo which made Naruto sweat drop, seems as though word was gonna get around very fast that he and Asagi were now partners. No surprise given his own infamy amongst the village's populace and Asagi's own popularity. As they walked, the number of people became fewer and fewer as they approached the Taemin district. If he remembered correctly, as the Taemin grew larger and larger in number and became more and more famous and popular, they began experiencing harassment from overeager fans and nosy reporters that had started invading their privacy. Preventing the Taemin from getting any peace and privacy while at home. It was eventually proposed that the Taemin would be segregated in their own district where they could live securely without being bothered by the rest of the villagers. They were allowed to police themselves and were even allowed to kill any and all intruders at their discretion. However, at the time, there came the question of where they would live. 
Then, unexpectedly, the Ichiha massacre happened, leaving the entire Ichiha district empty. With all but one of the Ichihas now gone, it was quickly dubbed meaningless to leave it in Sasuke's hands, since he had no need for an entire district all to himself. Thus the Ichiha district was given to the Taimanin and redubbed as the Taimanin district. Some protested this unprecedented action, mainly those who wanted to get in Sasuke's good graces. Said protesters argued that this was a violation against the Ichiha clan, to which many, including the Hokage, would quip what clan. It's just one boy now. From what Naruto had heard about the Taimanin district, they all lived in the lap of luxury and homes designed specifically to their tastes. Pretty vague, but it sounded like paradise in comparison to his crummy apartment that had a funny smell that consisted of mildew and rot. It wasn't much longer until they arrived at a massive wall that separated the Taimanin district from the rest of the village. The wall was specifically designed to be resistant to jutsu techniques and had certain seals placed upon it that prevented shinobi from climbing over, with the help of chakra supposedly said seals were implemented when a certain pervert kept on trying to break into their homes but repeatedly escaped capture. There was also numerous signs planted across the wall that read as go away. Or trespassers will be killed on sight or even perverts will be castrated with extreme prejudice. Understandably, the Taimanin were very serious about keeping intruders out since they valued their privacy. Naruto then turned his attention to a large gate where an orange-haired Taimanin with large breasts stood guard carrying a large weapon that resembled a bazooka. She was smoking a cigarette and observed both Asagi and the Yuzumaki approaching before speaking yo, Asagi. Nice to see ya. Who's this? You finally get married. At this, the almighty Taimanin nodded and replied indeed. This is my partner, Naruto Yuzumaki. Naruto, meet Mika Kamamura, she frequently guards the district walls and gates. Anyone who tries to get in without one of our members' permission gets blasted by her flames. We'll make arrangements so that you'll have a passport so that you can enter and leave without issue. Nice to meet you Mika-san. Naruto greeted politely, though inwardly was thinking seriously. You need a passport to get in and out of their district. Then again, I guess that's just another precaution. Asagi then produced a passport from seemingly thin air and presented it to the orange-haired woman who inspected the passport carefully for any signs of forgery. She then nodded and spoke K. Okay. Checks out. Go on in. You enjoy yourself Naruto. Be seeing you around. Mika then snapped her fingers and in response the gate started to open allowing the new couple to enter inside. As they walked through the gates, Mika then suddenly called out from behind them Hey Asagi, you bagged yourself a cute one. I'm kinda jelly. This earned a small laugh from the brunette who waved Maiko off as they continued on towards her home. As they walked through the Taimanin district, the Yuzumaki saw many of their homes, many of which were of unique designs. Some preferred western styles, others eastern styles, some had visible swimming pools, others had private gardens, each home obviously unique to their owners. They would sometimes pass by a Taimanin who would happily wave to Asagi, then take notice of Naruto and offer their congratulations before moving on. Now that he thought about it, Asagi was also labeled as the unofficial but undisputed leader of the Taiman in themselves, which granted her even greater influence in the village. After a few more minutes of walking, they arrived at an eastern-style home that had an elegant stone garden that could be outside, as well as a private dojo for training. Ah, come to think of it, if Naruto's memory served him correctly, this exact spot used to be where the Ichiha compound used to be, the home of the clan head Fugaku and his family, Sasu concluded. A little ironic if you ask him, or perhaps a form of poetic justice, since the blonde didn't have many good memories of when the Ichihas were around, though he did have some nice memories of Itachi who treated him with decency, and his mother Makoto, who was also nice to him on the few occasions they met. A shame that Makoto died, maybe if she had lived Sasuke wouldn't have been such an asshole. Ah well, no point in speculation. Everything okay Naruto-kun? Asagi asked as she unlocked the front door of her home, which prompted the whiskered teen to reply I'm fine was just thinking about something. Don't worry about it. She accepted his answer and then ushered him inside of her home. At the entryway, Naruto removed his shinobi sandals with a blue net removing her own footwear as they entered deeper inside. Make yourself at home, feel free to look around. My home is now your home. Asagi spoke and then made a sweeping gesture as if to say he had free reign of the place now. The blonde accepted her invitation and began looking around to familiarize himself with his new surroundings. The first place he took notice of was the kitchen which was equipped with the latest, most advanced, and most expensive appliances available. He took a peek inside the oven and concluded that it was gas-powered, a lot of things in here must be powered by gas including the heat and water. He then looked inside the refrigerator and found it to be fully stocked, filled to the brim with fresh vegetables and meats of all sorts. One could probably cook damn near anything within reason with all of these ingredients. There's more ingredients in the pantry, you can also find spices and the like in there too. 
fresh groceries are delivered weekly, and trash is taken on the weekends, don't forget to properly separate trash from recyclables. Asagi explained, earning a nod from the blonde as he shut the fridge and continued exploring Asagi's home. The next area he encountered was the living room where plush leather couches could be seen, facing toward an enormous flat-screen TV that hanged off the wall, beneath it were shelves of numerous movies that Asagi owned, all neatly arranged alphabetically and by series, and amongst them was Princess Gale. Naruto asked upon seeing one of his favorite movie series amidst her collection. Oh. Are you a fan? I always liked that series. I admit I might have even drawn some inspiration for certain techniques from them. Asagi explained with a small smile, it would seem that she and Naruto also had similar tastes as well, which was further proof of their compatibility. Yup. Always loved those movies. I'm eager for the next one to come out. Naruto spoke with a smile. I am as well. She replied warmly as the blonde continued perusing around, and then he noticed of an electronic device that was connected to the TV via cable, he had seen such things advertised on TV, and occasionally seen them in the windows of certain stores. If he remembered right, this was a console for playing video games, and sitting next to the console was a box labeled Taman in Action. Which featured a Sagi and some other Taman in on the cover. Wait, what? You have your own video game too Naruto shouted in surprise since he had never heard of a Taman in themed game. Oh, that. A certain game company requested to use our likenesses and consulted us about its development and how to accurately depict us. Not my usual thing, but I didn't see the harm in it. It's not yet available to the general public, but feel free to play it if you want. My sister Sakura loves video games. I think you like her. She's off on a mission right now but should be back in a few days. Asagi explained earning an excited look from her new partner. He had never played a video game before, such things were far too expensive for him due to his limited stipend. He certainly wouldn't mind giving it a try later. Bedroom and bath is upstairs, you already saw the dojo outside. We'll see about getting you some new clothes tomorrow. Now then, sit down. Take a load off. Let's get to know each other. Asagi spoke as she sat down on the couch with a blonde joining her at a request. He had heard many stories about her and saw her on TV often, but he didn't really know that much about her personally. Tell me a little about yourself, Naruto-kun. What kind of foods do you like? What was it like in the academy? At her questions, the Yuzumaki frowned a bit at the mention of the academy, then answered Raymond's my favorite food, though I also like a good pizza. As for the academy well it was hell for me. The Sagi pursed her lips as she crossed one leg over the other and spoke that Aruka seemed to have it out for you for some reason. How bad was it really? Oh, sorry, if the subject is too sensitive, you don't need to answer. The Jinchuriki shook his head and replied nah. It's fine. It was always tough for me in the academy. Some students often bullied me, teased me or called me names, and I couldn't do anything about it because then I'd just get into deeper trouble. I failed two graduation exams which resulted in me being called the dead last, a nickname that bastard Aruka encouraged. What a prick. I'm pretty sure he kept on pairing me with Sasuke just so the precious rookie of the year would be able to make use of his punching bag. That's awful. I am so sorry you went through all of that. Iruka and many others repeatedly suggested to me and introduced me to Sasuke Chiha at every given opportunity. Never before had I met such an ungrateful, spoiled, and entitled little brat who thought he is owed everything because of his pedigree. Asagi spoke in a disgruntled voice, but at least now she didn't have to worry so much about it, now that she finally had a partner. Doesn't surprise me. I think that everyone just wants to get in on Sasuke's good side so they can get his money. I'm more than certain that his army of fangirls are probably encouraged and egged on by their parents to hook up with him for his money. Naruto spoke as he clasped his hands behind his head with a sigh, grateful to be finally free of that particular headache. Is he aware of this? Asagi questioned, if he was aware, then it seemed strange that the Achiha hadn't done anything to discourage people from trying to cozy up to him. I doubt he even cares. Even if he does know, he probably either enjoys the attention or believes that his money just gives him power over others or something like that. Now can we please talk about something else? Just talking about that douch bag is starting to upset me. Naruto practically pleaded at the end, earning an apologetic expression from the net. I'm sorry. I got off track. Why don't you try asking me a question then? I'm an open book for you, Naruto-kun. She offered, which made the blonde think for a second before he asked her sure, I've got one, out of all the people you could have picked would you pick me? You could have chosen anyone you wanted, but you picked me, the dead last of the academy. Why? She was caught off guard for a brief moment since she hadn't expected him to ask that one point blank, but she supposed that she should have seen it coming, since this must all still be a shock to him, the reality of his new situation probably hadn't sunk in yet either. 
She sighed and then started to answer his question as best she could well. I have been trying to find a viable partner for years now, unfortunately my own fame and popularity made it difficult to find a good partner. Many wished to join me, hoping to coast off my fame and fortune or simply desired me for my body. There were a few occasions that I'd almost chosen poorly, but thanks to the help of my sister and friends, I was able to avoid making said poor decisions. From the first moment I sensed you, I felt that you were different than many I had previously encountered, especially when I took notice when that Aruka fellow tried repeatedly to discourage me from speaking with or even considering you for marriage. I am also aware of your unique status in the village as well, yet despite your upbringing, you retained a strong sense of loyalty, kindness and justice, traits that I admire very much. When she had finished speaking, the blonde smiled and nodded as he spoke I'm glad. It means a lot to hear you say all that. I guess even being famous and gorgeous has its drawbacks. At any rate, I'll do my best to support you as your partner Asagi-san. Please. You can call me Asagi-chan if you wish. We must become comfortable and familiar with each other if we're to be proper partners. She spoke with a soft smile, which Naruto returned as he blushed a bit while rubbing the back of his head. It felt a bit strange to refer to her in such a casual and affectionate manner, then again she had already started referring to him as Kun, so he supposed that he should respond in kind. Okay, sure Asagi-chan. By the way, if I'm to be your partner, when do we start training? I'm also supposed to give you chakra right. How do I do that? Is there some kind of special taman and related technique I should know about? He asked at the end out of innocent curiosity, also it actually felt nice to call her Asagi-chan, it almost rolled off the tongue for him as a matter of fact. Rather surprising really. The almighty taman and blushed a bit, a slight look of discomfort on her face, before she smiled and replied now, now, you only just got here. We can worry about that a little later after you've settled in. At her words the Yuzumaki nodded in agreement since that made sense. He was kinda jumping the gun a bit there anyway however he couldn't help but notice that it appeared as if she was avoiding his question. Why? Was it something embarrassing or was it simply a touchy subject? If that was the case, he wouldn't pry about it. He was sure that she would explain it to him in her own time. By the way what is that you're supposed to be wearing? She asked out of nowhere and gestured to his orange jumpsuit before continuing, it is making my eyes hurt just looking at it. The whiskered teen sweat dropped and asked why does nobody like my outfit? What's wrong with orange? It was also from a bargain bin sale, so it was real cheap too. He added that last part with a nime tears, due to his stipend he was very limited on what he could or couldn't buy, thus he was always on the lookout for cheap deals. Too much orange. Way too much orange. It's hideous and gaudy. We need to find you something more suitable later, and then we can burn that hideous thing. Just looking at it is giving me an urge to chop it up. Asagi grumbled as she started to draw her blade without even realizing it. Don't chop me up. Naruto cried out in fear since he was still wearing it, which seemed to cause Asagi's senses to return as she sheathed her blade while mumbling an apology, a light dusting of pink on her cheeks from the slightly embarrassing display. She then giggled a bit which made the blonde laugh in turn, since it was a little funny, the almighty Taemin then proposed, what say we watch a little TV as we talk? We might find something interesting at this time I think. At this, the Yuzumaki nodded in agreement, since she had just brought it up, he was kinda wondering how crisp and clear the picture would be when it came on. His old TV was all grainy and glitchy back home to the point that it was almost unwatchable, so it would be nice to finally get a clear picture. Asagi reached for the remote and pushed a small red button at the top, causing the TV to come to life, the speakers suddenly came to life as well, and the picture revealed what appeared to be a news report with the words breaking news flying across the screen, which then showed several photos of himself and Asagi walking together through the village streets and entering through the Taemanen. District's gates. The news anchor then appeared sitting behind a desk and then spoke according to numerous eyewitnesses and photographic evidence, as shown, the famed Taman in Asagi Agawa has made a highly controversial decision in choosing one Naruto Uzumaki as her partner. Naruto is infamously known for his many pranks and his lackluster performance in the academy. Many were of the mind that Sasuke Chiha would be her chosen partner due to his natural strength, talent, and skills that earned him the top spot in the academy. Sadly, it seems that this powerful combination of the Achiha elite and the almighty Taemanen was not to be. We now go live at the Kanoha Academy itself where witnesses of Asagi's marriage proposal was observed. Once the anchor was done speaking, both Asagi and Naruto looked at each other with expressions of surprise, while they initially figured that word would get out about them now being partners, they didn't expect it to happen this fast. Then again, given their respective reputations and that they lived in a shinobi village, it shouldn't be that huge of a surprise how quickly word had spread. They turned their attention back to the television screen, where the face of one Ino Yamanka could be seen with a look of surprise, as several microphones were almost shoved in her face. 
Wow you guys got here super fast do you guys have shinobi training or something? Ino asked out of curiosity, earning some chuckles from the reporters. You are a classmate of Naruto Uzumaki, do you have any comment about him being partnered with Asagi Agawa? Asked one of the reporters while the sounds of scribbling could be heard, apparently they were already or getting ready to take notes. Well I'm kinda happy for him I guess. He's always had a hard time in the academy, so I think he needed a leg up to succeed. The blonde heiress responded with a small smile. Word has it that Naruto is a troublemaker, care to comment on that? Why do you think Asagi picked him over Sasuke? Another reporter questioned while pushing a microphone closer to Ino's face that made her scowl in annoyance. Seriously, did reporters and paparazzi not understand the concept of personal space? It's true that Naruto's a prankster, but he's not a bad guy. He's actually pretty nice when you get to know him. I don't know why she picked him, but I guess she saw something in him beyond his subpar grades. I mean, Taman and aren't just looking for strength in their partners, right? Otherwise they'd probably be pairing with Anbu or Jonan. Maybe they're looking for something more. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but that's how I feel about it. Ino explained, while the sounds of furious scribbling could be heard. You said that Naruto has been struggling in the academy. Could you please expand on that? A third reporter asked. Well, from what I know and have seen, Naruto always has difficulty in performing certain jutsu, most prominently the academy taught clone jutsu that's needed to pass the graduation exam. I have even seen and heard him ask Aruka sensei for help, but he always turns Naruto away. She answered causing the reporters to explode into a jabbering mess as the camera panned away from Ino and then focused on the form of the scarred Chunin himself a short distance away. Oh, this is gonna be good. Naruto commented with sadistic glee, wanting to see the Chunin humiliate himself on live television and even better, prove just how bad of a teacher he was to the whole village. The reporters then swarmed the Chunin as they shoved their microphones into his face making him recoil backwards as he was bombarded with questions, most prominently is it true you refused to help a student struggling to pass the academy's graduation exam? At that particular question, the scarred Chunin scoffed as he straightened his vest and headband before replying with a fake smile of course not. I don't know where you got that idea from. I always told him that he needed to keep practicing, but it seems he never bothered to take my advice. It's not my fault he is a bad student. That fucking liar. He never gave me any advice at all. What a poser. Naruto muttered angrily as he flipped the bird towards the TV screen, or more specifically at the Chunin himself, all the while Asagi frowned deeply at Aruka's behavior. The reporters could be heard scribbling more notes before one pointed out Naruto Uzumaki has been in your class since his very first day at the academy, yes. If he is such a bad student as you claim, why didn't you or your partner make attempts to push him towards being a better student? Why hasn't he been able to master the clone jutsu during his tenure in his class? At that line of questioning, Haruka's facial expression almost instantly changed as his face paled, sweat started to form on his skin, and his face became all scrunched up, like he was trying to keep himself from losing control of his bowels in that moment, and his eyes wouldn't stop looking around, as if he were trying to find some kind of exit to run to. Are you neglecting all of your students or just the ones you don't like? One reporter asked. There have been long-standing rumors that certain officials are bribing others to give preferential treatment to Sasuke Chia. Are academy teachers like yourself involved? Another asked. What do you have to say for yourself? Are you corrupt? Why hasn't Naruto Uzumaki improved under your tutelage? What are you even teaching in your class? Are the children being properly prepared for their shinobi careers? Is the future generation of Konoha's military compromised? Another reporter asked in a rapid-fire manner. Aruka's face started to grow red as the pressure mounted on him, which seemed to increase further, since they had him backed into a corner. Growing irritated with their line of questioning and wanting them to be silent Aruka perhaps made the worst mistake of his life. Shut up. All of you. Leave me alone. Aruka lashed out, then stormed off, trying to retreat from the reporters before they could question him further. Not that they needed to, his reaction was all that they needed suffice it to say, Aruka was definitely gonna answer for that later. As this went on, Naruto's stomach grumbled which made Asagi giggle a bit as she turned off the TV and then spoke seems like someone's hungry. Food sounds like a good idea right about now. How does steak sound? Would you like to try some filet mignon? She got up from the couch and made her way towards the kitchen where she retrieved a large cookbook loaded with numerous recipes and then flipped over towards the appropriate section. The Yuzumaki swallowed as his mouth salivated at the thought of a good meal, never had steak before. He commented since it was yet another thing he had never been able to try, again due to a limited budget and filet mignon. If he remembered, that was the most expensive cut of all. Wow he had just gone from living in a slum to living like a damned king. No. Never. Well, I think it's time to fix that. I think I'll wrap it up in a nice layer of bacon. 
she spoke with a smile while tracing her finger along the page of a certain recipe, and then began to collect the necessary ingredients from the fridge and pantry, along with a variety of spices. Now I need a side dish to serve it with. Naruto-kun. Would you prefer a baked potato or french fries? She asked with a kind smile, her words only making the blonde's mouth water further, until drool could be seen leaking from the corner of his mouth, which he quickly caught and wiped away. Uh, the latter if that's fine. Also you seem to know your way around a kitchen. Naruto commented at the end to which Asagi giggled slightly. I love to cook, it's something of a hobby of mine. Also it is a good skill to have when one is traveling about on the road. She explained with the blonde nodding and understanding, while he was no stranger to a kitchen, he often had little room to experiment due to limited ingredients and tools and again, a limited budget. Please Naruto-kun. Sit down, relax. There's no need for formalities. This is your home now. I want you to feel welcome. As I promised you earlier, you won't want for anything. Also, if anyone dares try to intimidate you into leaving me, don't hesitate to speak with me about it, I won't allow anyone to even think of trying to bully you. She promised him with a sweet smile, which almost brought a tear to the Jinchuriki's eye as he took a seat as he observed Asagi preparing their meal. No longer was he alone in an old and decaying apartment, he now had the chance for a new life and a fresh start by Asagi's side as her partner. He had only known her a short time, and she was already treating him with such care and kindness. He could only hope that he could live up to whatever expectations she may have for him. Starting today, a new chapter in his life was about to begin. Hami, that dinner was good. Asagi sure can cook. Naruto muttered to himself as he stood beneath a shower head, allowing the warm water to wash over his body as he mused over his new situation. He never imagined that a proper shower could feel this nice, since his apartment had pretty questionable water pressure, and it took seemingly ages for the water to warm up to an appropriate temperature. In Asagi's shower though, the water heated up very quickly, and the liquid hitting him almost felt like a massage in a way. He kinda chuckled at how a simple everyday thing was bringing him so much pleasure, maybe it was because he felt like he could actually enjoy it now. To think, just a few hours ago he was slumming around in a rotting and decrepit apartment, now he had been invited into the home of the legendary Taman in Asagi Agawa. A tiny piece of him kind of wondered if perhaps this was all a dream, perhaps because the reality of the situation hadn't fully sunk in yet. He sighed as he lathered his hair up with some minty smelling shampoo, it seemed like Asagi also had similar tastes in shampoo and body wash like himself. Nothing fancy, but will definitely get the job done which is all he cared about. Everything all right in there? The voice of the famed Taemin called out through a very slight opening in the bathroom door. Yeah. Sorry. Am I taking too long? I was just enjoying your shower I guess. He spoke sheepishly, feeling a little guilty if he was hogging the bathroom in the event that she wanted to use it for herself. Take your time. Don't forget that we have several errands to do tomorrow. Since you're now my partner, we need to get you registered for your shinobi license and get you a passport so you may freely come and go out of the Taemin district. Oh, and we also need to get you some new clothes. She stated in a kindly manner, giving him a gentle reminder of the tasks they needed to perform. Things were happening pretty fast now, not that he was complaining. After a few more minutes in the shower, he shut off the water and exited, finding a bathrobe, and his boxers, which had been recently washed by Asagi, were waiting for him. He slipped on his underwear and put on the robe, admiring the softness of the fabric. He exited the bathroom and found Asagi casually lounging on her bed, wearing an almost see-through nighty with lace underwear, a book in one hand and a glass of wine resting next to her on the nightstand. The sight made him blush a bit since he wasn't expecting to see her in that state of dress. He supposed that it would be a regular occurrence, and he'd have to get used to it not that he minded. It made for a very pleasant sight after all. She glanced up at him and smiled warmly as she spoke have a seat Naruto-kun. You can turn on the TV if you want. She then gestured to the bedroom TV hanging off the wall and patted the space next to her. While the offer was appreciated, he was pretty sure all the channels were still talking about him and Adagi. That aside, he felt pretty tired anyway. He chuckled a little nervously as he accepted the invitation and slipped into the bed with her. He felt rather bashful since he wasn't used to living with another person, least of all a woman. Not to mention there was the fact that Asagi insisted that they slept in the same bed together so that they may continue to bond and grow closer. Something wrong? You seem a little stiff. The almighty Taemin asked with a little smirk. Sorry. This is all kind of new I guess. He answered honestly, earning a nod of understanding from the brunette. Don't worry. I promise to take good care of you. If you ever feel uncomfortable or need to set boundaries, please tell me. I won't force you into anything you don't want to do. She spoke soothingly and gently cupped his cheek with her free hand while touching her forehead to his. The affectionate gesture made the Jinchuriki tense up a bit before relaxing. 
He inhaled deeply, taking in her scent Kami, Asagi smelled so good. Her skin felt soft and smooth, and her touch was warm and gentle. He felt a strong urge to snuggle up to her and melt into her embrace. Almost as if sensing this, she set her book aside and pulled him close until their bodies were pressed together, her soft but firm breasts almost enveloping his head, as she gently massaged his scalp while she sang softly if I had words to make a day for you. I'd sing you a morning golden and new. I would make this day last for all time. Give you a night deep in moonshine. As she sang, the blonde felt himself relaxing against her, his eyes growing steadily more and more heavy as sleep slowly took hold of him. Between the comforting feel of her body and the softness of the luxurious memory foam mattress, he felt himself almost drifting away until finally he blissfully fell into a deep sleep. Asagi smiled and placed a tender kiss atop his forehead, knowing that the excitement and the day's events must have tuckered him out. He was such a sweetheart and a little shy too. She was definitely going to enjoy having him as her partner. She wasn't sure why, but there was something about him that made her heart sore and she wanted nothing more than to make him happy. She had attempted other relationships in the past for potential partners, but none of them made her heart flutter in the way that Naruto did, and they had only known each other for less than a day. Oh yes, she was very much looking forward to deepening her bond with him. Asagi turned off the lights and then pulled the covers over their bodies, snuggling close to the blonde as subconsciously wrapped his arms around her. How cute. He liked to cuddle. She smiled as she rested her head against her pillow and whispered good night, Naruto-kun. The next morning. Naruto yawned as he stirred awake, his eyes fluttering open as he found himself cuddling with the still sleeping form of the famed Taimanin, their legs tangled together as she gave off a very light and barely audible snoring. Her face seemed so peaceful as she slept soundly. Honestly speaking, he felt so comfortable right now, he didn't really want to get up, but he kind of felt nature's calling much to his annoyance, which meant he was going to be forced to leave the bed. He sighed to himself and tried to pull away, only to find that Asagi was still holding him rather tightly. He feared that if he pulled away too hard that it would wake her up, but at the same time he really had to go. He muttered an apology and slowly pushed against her to try and find some leverage, and as expected her eyes opened as she woke up. Good morning. Sleep well. He nodded at her question and replied sure did. Sorry that I woke you but I kinda gotta go. He muttered the last part in embarrassment which made her give an awe of understanding and released him. As he got off the bed, she noticed something a very large bulge in his boxers. Big. She whispered to herself, but it was still audible enough for the Yuzumaki to hear as he wondered what she was talking about, he then followed her gaze downward and realized that she was eyeing his morning erection. He flushed a deep scarlet in embarrassment and quickly retreated into the bathroom while shouting I'm so sorry. There was an unintended slam of a door as Asagi mused to herself, wondering exactly how large his manhood was. While she couldn't figure on an exact measurement, there was no room for doubt that he was definitely above average. She then bit her lip upon realizing that he was probably beside himself with embarrassment or shame. It would be best to wait for a bit before speaking to him about it. Especially since intimacy would soon become part of their daily life. That aside, there were other things that had to be checked off for today. Though for some reason Asagi suddenly got a feeling that today may yet be a massive headache. Meanwhile. In the Hokage's office, here is in Saratobi's side as he rubbed his temples. Sitting across from him was none other than Aruki Yamino, who seemed like he wanted to vanish out of existence, especially since there was a little television sitting atop the Sandame's desk, which was replaying the footage of the scarred tune and snapping at the reporters that were there that day. I cannot begin to express how your outburst is an embarrassment to Ruka. Since the footage aired, I have been bombarded with questions and complaints about the quality of the academy's teachers and the curriculum. People are even asking questions about preferential treatment of certain students, especially Sasuke. The Hokage spoke in a grave tone as he glared at the academy teacher. That has nothing to do with me. I never gave special treatment to him. Hiruka blurted out defensively while holding up his hands in a placating manner, the gesture seemingly only angering the Hokage further. Perhaps not, but you did single out Naruto-kun. Don't deny it. After that little news report, I did some checking. I already questioned several of your students, and they all told me the same things. You coined the title of dead last for him, you frequently paired him against Sasuke Chiha in class bars, and as young Ino Yamanaka clearly stated, whenever he came to you for help you would deny him. Either I'm going senile, or perhaps you wanted to keep Naruto a prisoner in your class or something of that nature. Hiruzen spoke in an increasingly dark tone of voice. Before the Chunin could say anything the Sandane continued the academy is one of, if not the absolute most important building in the village. The next generation of shinobi are trained there future Anbu, Jonin, perhaps even a future Hokage. You had one job. One. To teach, train, and nurture your students. Not only are you persecuting Naruto due to a personal grudge, you are not properly teaching discipline in your students. 
Do I need to explain how practically rabid fangirls can be a problem? Are you that incompetent at your job? The Hokage shouted with rising anger in his voice. The sand aim realized that he had been too lenient with the academy teachers by giving them minimal oversight. While he didn't wish to constantly peek over their shoulders, he now realized that giving them too much leeway offered them opportunities to cut corners. This was unacceptable. There was a rapid knocking at the door, catching the attention of the sand aim since it sounded urgent, which in turn allowed Aruka to breathe a sigh of relief. This isn't over Aruka. Come in. He shouted the last part towards the door, allowing the person knocking entry into his office. The door was shoved open as an orange blur appeared with a female figure slapping her palms down on the sand aim's desk with enough force to make the wood splinter and crack. What happened? What happened to my sister? Where's my one chan Shouted the form of Wanigawa Sakura, Asagi's younger sister. Wasakura-san. What are you doing back so soon? You weren't scheduled to return for another few days. The Hokage questioned since the tomboy Taimanin was supposed to be on a scouting mission to investigate a certain shipping tycoon. Eh? You sent me this urgent summons. She replied in clear confusion as she produced a rather official-looking document, signed and stamped with the Hokage's signature and seal. The document gave orders to the Orange Tea to return to Kanoha immediately, due to an incident involving her sister very strange. Erm not that I don't appreciate you responding so promptly, but I never sent this to you. Hiruzen muttered as he pushed the summons aside, as both he and Sakura exchanged confused looks with one another. Wait if you didn't call me back then who the hell did? She questioned with a raised eyebrow. She didn't like being played for a fool, and she especially didn't like that someone may have let her on with false worry about her elder sister. I did. Spoke an aged voice as the form of one Hamura Medicado entered inside the office. Hiruzen glowered at his teammate and spoke I never gave you permission, much less the authority to act on my behalf in such a manner, Hamura. I only acted in the best interests of the village, Hiruzen. You should know that by now. Hamura spoke as he smoothed out his robes, his lackluster response making the sand aim glare at his teammate and advisor, who was clearly overstepping his boundaries. For many years, Hiruzen had relied on his teammates and old comrades for counsel, but lately it seemed that they had become too accustomed to their positions. The hell do you want you old fart? I ran all the way from wave country non-stop for this. Sakura yelled as she snatched up the fall summons, crumpled it in her fist, and then threw it at the Sandame's teammate, making the ball of paper bounce off his chest, while Hamura retained a passive expression. It would be best that we speak in private about this Sakura-san. Good day Hiruzen, Aruka. The aged counselor spoke as he gestured for the orange tea to follow him, making her stamp her foot while puffing her cheeks as she followed after him out of the office. The Sandame didn't like this one little bit. It was safe to assume that this was in relation to her elder sister Asagi, choosing Naruto as her partner, a decision that was met with widespread criticism and controversy, since it was often believed she was supposed to have chosen Sasuke, almost as if their pairing was preordained or something. Hiruzen considered intervening, but decided against it, since he was certain that Asagi herself would clear up any confusion. That aside, he had more pressing concerns to worry about at this time. One of them being Aruka and his lack of performance. Now then where were we Aruka? The Sande masked as he laced his fingers together, his lips curling into a deep frown as he watched the Chunin squirm uncomfortably. The aged Hokage was of the mind to strip both Aruka and Mizuki of their headbands, but first he was going to make them sweat for a little while. Meanwhile, Sakura was glaring at the form of Himura while impatiently tapping her foot as she asked OK then old timer. What's this all about? You better start talking before I shove one of my ninjados so far up your wrinkled ass, the blade will wink at you every time you brush your teeth. She threatened while drawing one of her blades. I apologize for bringing you back under such circumstances and for the confusion, but your sister, Asagi, has chosen a partner recently. She even performed the oath in public and in front of witnesses. He quickly and bluntly explained, his words earning a look of surprise from the orange tea. Why it mo you no fair sis? I wanted to be there to see you do the oath. She muttered in a childish manner while crying some crocodile tears before putting on a happy expression and then asked so who's the lucky guy? I bet that my big sis picked a real cutie pie. Regrettably, she chose one Naruto Uzumaki. The worst student in the academy's history. A troublemaker, delinquent, and a well-known pest that rides the coattails of his betters. The only reason he's interested in partnering with her is because of her wealth and status, plus he was bragging to his classmates about how he was going to get into Asagi Sen's pants. I need you to talk with your sister and have her break things off before it is too late. Hamura spoke with a deep scowl. Eh? No way my sister would pair up with someone that shady. Unless he must have tricked her. Ugh. That bastard. I won't let anyone betray my sister again. The tomboy Taimanin muttered while clenching her fist, unaware that she had been lied to. 
under normal circumstances, it was considered an unspoken rule for Taemin to stick with and be loyal to their chosen partners. A Taemin who casually breaks things off with their partner is considered to be untrustworthy and unreliable, although this unspoken rule doesn't truly apply under certain circumstances. Such as abusive relationships or for dealing with unfaithful, manipulative or gold-digging partners. While Sakura was certain that her sister could handle things on her own, Asagi was still capable of making mistakes, so as her younger sister, it was her duty to support her big sis. Whoever this Naruto person was if he was some little creep, he was gonna pay dearly. Elsewhere. Taman in district. Naruto shuddered as he suddenly got a chill, a feeling of dread overcoming him as he began rapidly rubbing his arms with his hands. Are you cold? His newfound partner asked with a raised eyebrow as she noticed his actions. Felt like I had a foot in the grave for a second. He replied honestly as he looked about, wondering if there was someone nearby that wished harm upon him. He then shrugged his shoulders and then spoke never mind. Must be my imagination or something so where are we shopping anyway? At his question, the almighty Taemin smiled and gestured to an oddly shaped building that was constructed in the likeness of a futuristic spaceship from a sci-fi film, with a sign hanging out front the Tread Prison Battleship. That was a very odd name for a store, and why the spaceship motif? Okay I gotta ask why does the store look like a ship? Also you guys have your very own store in your district? He asked as he tilted his head to the side, though one had to admit the place certainly stood out. For the sake of convenience. Can you imagine trying to go shopping for groceries, only to be suddenly mobbed by a swarm of fans asking for pictures and autographs or reporters following your every move? As much as I love and respect my fans, I still need some personal space and privacy. As for the design I haven't the slightest idea why it was made to look like a spaceship. Maybe in another world or another life, the owners were spacefaring officers. Asagi answered while running a hand through her hair. He wasn't sure if that was a serious statement or a joke, but he wasn't going to judge. Not to mention, when she put it like that, it made sense for a store or stores to be placed within the Taemin district so that they can shop in peace. Guess being rich and famous has some drawbacks. He muttered to himself as they entered inside. Upon entry, he was greeted by the sight of neatly arranged shelves, with each section being marked by a sign hanging overhead. Groceries, electronics, tools, it seemed the place had virtually anything and everything within reason. At the front of a store were a pair of women wearing white gray uniforms in a futuristic military fashion. One woman had purple hair and teal eyes, the other had short black hair and red eyes. Naruto. Meet Rieri Bishop, the owner of this store and her assistant Naomi Evans. Asagi spoke as she introduced the two women to her new partner. Nice to meet you ladies. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. This looks like a nice store. He spoke politely, feeling confident that he could shop here without fear of being denied service or being overcharged for goods as many stores had done to him in the past. The two women smiled at him with Rieri speaking thank you Naruto. This place is my pride and joy. Feel free to drop by any time. Gotta say Asagi, he's a handsome one. Seems nice and polite too. She spoke the last part to the almighty Taemin, earning a small blush from the Jinchuriki. Are you two Taemin as well? The whiskered teen asked, earning a pair of negative shakes of the head from the store attendants. No. We never underwent the procedure, but we are more than capable of handling ourselves in a pinch. Our main jobs are to provide the Taemin with anything and everything they need, no matter how unrealistic or absurd the request is. If a Taemin and or their partner want or need something, we get it for them. Naomi replied with a proud smirk as she crossed her arms beneath her bust. At that, the Yuzumaki raised an eyebrow and decided to test them by asking what if I wanted a tank like from one of those war movies. We can definitely get you a tank. We have an entire catalog to choose from. Ammunition and fuel is included. Rieri answered bluntly without skipping a beat, almost as if the young teen asking for a tank was perfectly normal. Wow they were really committed to their jobs. This definitely wasn't an ordinary store, but since it did directly serve and cater to the Taemin, then being ordinary certainly wouldn't have cut it. Eh, why would you want a tank? Asagi asked with a raised eyebrow, which prompted her partner to reply in a deadpan tone, to drive around in and blow stuff up with. What the hell else are you supposed to do with a tank? He asked at the end as if it were the most simple thing in the world. What would you want to blow up? She asked for clarification, only to earn a cheeky grin from the Yuzumaki as he replied, I've got a few ideas. Oh. Sounded like it would not be a good idea to let him have a tank. At least not until she knew he would use it and handle it in a responsible manner. Don't let him have a tank unless I say so. She ordered the store owners, prompting them both to nod in understanding. While the blonde was a tad disappointed, he simply shrugged his shoulders, since he didn't really need a tank at this time, though it still would have been pretty fun. Now then, what can we do for you? Please tell me it involves replacing that hideous orange abomination. 
Rieri asked as she glared at the Yuzumaki's distinctive orange jumpsuit, almost as if she wanted to set it ablaze with only her intense gaze. Why do people keep hating on my clothes? Naruto muttered to himself, earning shocked gasps from the store owners. You call those clothes? I wouldn't wish those upon my worst enemy. Naomi muttered, fighting the urge to tear them off of him right then and there. Asagi then cleared her throat and spoke we are here to do some shopping. Naruto-kun needs clothes for casual wear and for shinobi business. I'd also like to do a tasting for some weapons that he can try out, and we also need to issue him a passport so that he may freely come and go from the Taimanan district. Not a problem. I'll get started on his passport immediately. Naomi. See to whatever our guests require in the meantime. Rieri ordered, prompting her crimson-eyed assistant to nod and give a quick salute as the purple-haired woman disappeared into a nearby office. Come with me Naruto-san. Let's get you sorted out. We'll start with your shinobi wear. We make those custom tailored. Naomi spoke as she guided him to a corner area where a set of mirrors were located. She pulled out a roll of measuring tape and unfurled it, followed by a clipboard and a pen from a nearby shelf, and then began taking his measurements. We'll need eight suits. Four for day and four for night. Asagi spoke as she sat herself down in a chair Klosabi as she fingered her katana, observing her new partner with a small smile. The Yuzumaki said nothing as he trusted that whatever the almighty Taimanin recommended would probably be for the best he had never owned a suit before, much less had one custom tailored for him. On another note, he definitely wouldn't mind the dapper appearance. He quietly listened as Naomi and Asagi did a little back and forth with the former asking any preferences for the suits. Social setting. Italian style. Two buttons. Tapered trousers. Tactical armored lining. Asagi listed off as if she had rehearsed those lines, with a Yuzumaki raising an eyebrow, since he didn't understand fashion speak. Can someone explain all of that to me? I didn't understand a word of that. He asked hoping for a little clarification which earned a few giggles from the ladies. Naomi answered him as she continued jotting down his measurements with practiced ease, social event means it can be in a casual cut, and the fabric can be slightly more lightweight, stretchy and comfortable, rather than the more refined but stiff cut in fabric used for formal suits. Italian-style suits tend to be more form-fitting and have less padding compared to British and American-style suits, which, along with a more comfortable and stretchy fabric and cut, provide a larger range of motion possible. Two buttons instead of three on the jacket means it still looks good if unbuttoned, making it easier to access concealed or holstered weapons. Papered trousers, apart for the slightly more elegant air they provide even to casual suits, give a bit more room on the upper leg without looking baggy, again, greater range of motion, she's asking for all the things that would make the suit more comfortable when running or fighting, while still looking dapper enough as to not attract attention until it's strictly necessary. The Jinchuriki blinked his eyes and gave a long drawn out O of understanding. Yeah. That would definitely be helpful. What about the lining? He asked, which prompted Naomi to pull a pistol out of seemingly thin air and fire a few rounds at a suit that was being worn by a mannequin. He noticed that the bullets didn't penetrate through their target and instead bounced off or flattened upon impact against the suit, which prompted the crimson-eyed woman to explain cutting-edge body armor, sewn between the lining and the fabric. Zero penetration against blades and bullets. Resistant to heat. Machine washable. Only downside is that the impact will still hurt like hell. I'm surprised this stuff isn't standard issue. He muttered quietly to himself, but was still heard with the two women smirking as Asagi stated, nothing comes standard to the Taimanin. Get used to the perks. Once Naomi was finished with her work she asked, shall I have everything sent to your residence Asagi-san? Her question prompting the famed Taimanin to nod her head in confirmation. The crimson-eyed woman then guided the two towards an area that could be considered an armory aligned with all manner of weapons. Kunai, tantos, katanas, firearms, and more. Don't often see guns in the shinobi nations. The Jinchuriki pointed out, which made the shopkeeper chuckle a bit. True. Possibly because the people of the shinobi nations are set in their ways. Though in my opinion, a well-placed bullet can be just as, if not more deadly than many forms of ninjutsu. I've yet to meet anyone who can outsmart a bullet to the brain. Also, they can make for good weapons if you need a backup plan or want to conserve chakra, since these babies don't take up any chakra. Now then, are you familiar with any forms of weapons? She asked him at the end. He hummed and thought, well firearms weren't a traditional form of shinobi weaponry, there were no specific laws or regulations that stated a shinobi couldn't use them, plus since they were so seldom seen, it would definitely take most enemies by surprise. If nothing else, it definitely wouldn't hurt to experiment a bit and find what worked for him. I don't really have much experience with weaponry, aside from my fists and kunai. Though my tajutsu could use a lot of work. He answered as he scratched his cheek with a lone finger. Naomi simply smiled and stated that only means you're a blank slate. Therefore there's plenty for you to learn. May I suggest a Glock.34. 
She asked as she offered him a pistol from off a nearby rack. He was about to accept it, but she snatched it out of his reach with a warning expression as she spoke four essential rules of gun safety. 1. Respect the weapon and treat all firearms as if they're loaded. 2. Never point a gun, loaded or unloaded, in the direction of someone you do not wish to shoot. 3. Finger off the trigger until your sights are on your target and you have made the decision to fire. 4. Be sure of your target and what's behind it, since you don't want the bullet to tear through your target and accidentally hit an innocent bystander. Are we clear? He slowly nodded in understanding since, in many ways, guns were known to be more dangerous and far more volatile than say, katanas or kunai, since there was the factor of gunpowder involved amongst other things. She accepted his response and gently placed the pistol in his hand, allowing him to feel the weight of the weapon as he pointed it off to the side, being sure not to point it in the direction of anyone. Textured grips to help prevent slipping. Flared magazine well for easier reload. Custom porting to prevent jamming. Naomi expertly listed off. The blonde set the weapon down on the table, minding the direction of the barrel. He cleared his throat and spoke very nice. What about something with more range? Something precise. He asked, feeling a bit unsure as to how to describe what he was looking for, since he had no experience with firearms. The shopkeeper simply smirked as she took a rifle off of one of the many racks and presented it to him. I suggest an R15. A classic choice. Lightweight. Semi-automatic and full auto settings. Very widely used weapon. She explained as the blonde held the weapon and inspected it, holding the rifle up as he looked down the sights. What do you mean semi and full auto? He asked, he then felt a hand on his shoulder and saw Asagi was now standing next to him. She gently maneuvered the rifle so that the stock was resting firmly against his shoulder. Always hold a rifle or shotgun against your shoulder to better absorb the recoil, otherwise it'll fly out of your hands or smack you in the face. Semi means it'll fire one bullet at a time with each pull of the trigger, full means that you can hold down the trigger and it'll keep spitting bullets until the magazine is empty. Some weapons can release short bursts of bullets as well. Like any other weapon, you have to familiarize yourself and get used to the handling of firearms. Asagi explained, earning a nod of understanding from the Yuzumaki it seemed there was a lot more to firearms than he had originally thought. Most action movies never really covered this kind of stuff. I hear shotguns are good for close quarters and enclosed spaces. Any recommendations for that? He asked since he knew that much at least, recalling that such weapons were used as trench cleaners. Or was it trench sweepers? I think an AA-12 will do the trick. Rapid fire. Drum magazine. You need to do a sweep through a building loaded with say, triad members, this will blast through them. Naomi spoke in a rather excited manner as she placed the weapon in front of him. Like all the others, he picked it up and got a feel for it before setting it down. If I run out of bullets, I'll need a different sort of weapon. I always wanted to learn how to use a katana. Naruto spoke, his words earning a twinkle of the eye from his partner, who was very much eager to teach him the fine arts of kinjutsu. Naomi smirked as she picked up a katana and presented to the blonde forged in Iron Country, the home of the samurai. You won't find a better blade. Razor sharp, perfectly balanced, and capable of channeling chakra. You can never go wrong with a good blade, especially one directly from Iron Country. The Yuzumaki accepted the blade and noticed how lightweight it was. It weighed almost nothing in his hand. As far as he was aware, the samurai jealously guarded the secrets of their forging techniques. Any blades made outside of Iron Country were almost always dubbed as inferior, save for some exceptions. Thanks. He spoke gratefully as he set the blade down, believing that he had covered his bases. With his weapons shopping done, the crimson-eyed shopkeeper directed him to another clothing area, one filled with various casual wear, most of it being made up of generic sizes and brands that could be found anywhere perfect for lounging around in. Can you do a rush order on his suits? I want to get him out of that orange monstrosity as soon as humanly possible. Asagi requested, earning a quick nod from Naomi. With their shopping now complete, Naomi bagged up all of Naruto's casual wear, underwear and socks, and rang up Asagi for their purchases, promising to deliver all the suit's ammunition and weaponry directly to her home when everything was ready. The blonde's eyes nearly bugged out of his head at the total price of their purchases, not even 20 years worth of his monthly stipends could cover even a fraction of the cost. He felt a bit bad for Asagi having to pay for it all, but she didn't even blink an eye as she quickly signed a check. She then looked at him, and he must have been making some sort of face because she stated in a soothing voice, don't feel bad Naruto-kun. Remember my promise. I promised you would want for nothing. That aside, money is of no concern to me. That made him feel a bit better as he gave her a light smile. He then noticed Rieri approaching them with a passport in hand as she offered it to the Yuzumaki and spoke in a professional manner, your passport Naruto-san. You can get your picture put in at the same time as your shinobi registration. Feel free to come by for all of your shopping needs. 
He nodded in understanding as he accepted the passport and bid the two shopkeepers goodbye before heading outside with Asagi. He gleefully carried his bags with him as they made their way towards the academy so that he may register as a shinobi. Today was just getting better and better. What could possibly go wrong? Meanwhile. Kanoha Academy Rooftop. Sasuke Chiha sat alone, quietly eating his lunch in relative peace as he blooded to himself. He glanced down at the school grounds, noting briefly that there was a definite change of atmosphere. Even from this distance he could see his fellow classmates were abuzz with gossip. Most of it undoubtedly either pertains to the dead last getting picked by the famed Asagi Agawa or Aruka and Mizuki's apparent absence since the scarred chunin blew up at the reporters yesterday. Classes were currently being handled by a pair of substitute chunin that the Achiha couldn't remember the names of, not that it mattered to him. He scoffed and took another bite of his meal and then noticed a shadow being cast over him as an elderly woman stood a few feet away, looking down at him. What do you want? The Achiha asked rudely, wondering what the old bag wanted with him. Sasuke Achiha. A pleasure to meet you. My name is Kahari Yudatane. She greeted politely, earning a HN sound from the self-proclaimed Avenger who wanted her to go away so he could be left alone. Why should I care? Either tell me what it is you want to go away. I have better things to do than be nagged on by an old woman. He spoke impatiently. It should be you that is paired with Asagi Agawa. Not Naruto. She stated bluntly, earning a roll of the eyes from the Achiha. HN. Why should that matter to me? I don't see how a woman is of any use to me, least of all one that would show an interest in a clanless good for nothing like the dope. Sasuke spoke venomously as he glared at Kaharu. Ah. There is something you should know though about Asagi. She was quite close with your elder brother. Itachi. Kaharu stated, her words catching the boy off guard as his contemptuous gaze became one of curiosity upon hearing her mention his brother. Yes. You heard me correctly. Back in Itachi's Anbu days, he and Asagi went on numerous assignments together. She was even considering making him her official partner up until the Ichiha massacre. If you had paired up with her, all of her resources, her strength, and her knowledge of your brother would have been a tremendous boon to you. She knows Itachi's techniques and strategies backwards and forwards. A shame your teachers neglected to share this information with you. The old woman stated, her words deeply resonating with the Ichiha. If what you say is true then it should be me that is partnered up with that woman. Not the dead last. She could help me kill Itachi. Sasuke spoke in realization as he grit his teeth. If only those incompetent teachers had told him, then he could have been paired with that Asagi woman. Her strength should belong to him. Not the lover. There is still a chance. If you can convince Naruto to leave Asagi or vice versa, then you can swoop in and take Asagi as your partner instead. You two could do great things together. Kaharu spoke, secretly picturing the most powerful of all the Taimanin, creating a new generation of Sharingan users. HMPH. That'll be easy. The dobe's a pushover. I'm certain I can buy him off. Failing that, I can always twist his arm until he gives up. The self-proclaimed elite spoke since he had some resources of his own. While he didn't like the idea of bargaining with a dope of all people, the information and strength that Asagi possessed wasn't something he could ignore any longer. As luck would have it he could even see the dope entering the courtyard now. But Naruto and Asagi. Once we have your shinobi license and passport registered we will begin your training starting tomorrow. Asagi promised him with a serene smile on her face. Cool. I'm definitely looking forward to it. It'll be nice to get some real training and studying done, rather than all that nami pami crap taught here at the academy. Naruto spoke with a big grin spreading across his cheeks. You may regret saying that. I'm a pretty strict teacher. She replied with a good-natured laugh as they approached the school. Their conversation was suddenly interrupted when a female voice shouted you. Hey. You. It can be Sakura Asagi asked herself, immediately recognizing the voice of her younger sister. She and Naruto turned around and saw the form of the orange tea herself marching up to them with an angry expression on her face. Sakura. As in Sakura Gawa. Your sister. The whiskered teen asked for confirmation, prompting a quick nod from the almighty Taimanin. That was kind of strange wasn't Sakura supposed to be on a mission. It seemed like she had come home early. Ah well, it would be nice to meet and get to know his partner's family. Hello Sakura-san. It's nice to meet you. I'm Naruto Yuzumaki, your sister's partner. He warmly greeted as he extended a hand to the approaching orange tea, only to be shoved to the ground by the younger Igawa sibling, much to both Naruto and Asagi's shared shock. Sakura what are you doing? That's my partner. Asagi shouted as she quickly rushed to the Yuzumaki's side and helped him off the ground while dusting off his clothes with her hand. You stay away from my sister you creep. I know everything. I'm not gonna let some pervy gold digger take advantage of my big sis. If you don't break up with her, I'll beat you up. 
The tomboy Taemin threatened while cracking her knuckles, her words making both the elder Agawa sibling and the Jinchuriki exchange confused looks. What in the hell are you talking about? I didn't ask Asagi to make me her partner. She's the one that asked me. The whiskered teen clarified earning a raised eyebrow from the orange tea. It's true. I picked him of my own volition. I think there is some sort of misunderstanding here Sakura. Naruto is a good guy with a big heart. If you get to know him, you'll see that for yourself. Asagi stated soothingly to try and calm her younger sister. Ha. Ah. I don't know what lies you were fed, but I'm not about to let you get hurt or betrayed again. Sakura shouted, making the Yuzumaki raise an eyebrow. What did she mean by again? The tomboy Taemin then turned her attention to the Yuzumaki and spoke with a sneer, you just want to take advantage of my sister and her money right? How much money do you want before you're satisfied? Huh? Naruto rubbed the back of his head as he replied, I don't really care about your sister's money. I haven't known her for long, but she's been really good to me. Just last night, she cooked for me and even sang me a song before I went to sleep. I can't begin to describe how good that felt. To be cared for. To be accepted. To be treated like I matter. That means more to me than all the money in the world. That's all I've ever really wanted is to be loved and accepted by someone. His heartfelt confession earned a deep blush from Asagi, who was genuinely touched by his words. His confession even had an impact on the orange tea as she blubbered you you really don't care about her money. Or her body. Asagi is really and truly beautiful. Perhaps one of the most beautiful women I've ever met more importantly she is so tender and kind-hearted. Any guy would be lucky to have her as a partner, and yet she chose me. It makes me feel really happy being with her. He spoke honestly with a beaming smile on his face. The orange teeth blinked a few times. From the way he spoke he certainly didn't sound like a gold digger or a creepy pervert. She now actually felt really bad for being so harsh towards him and treating him so badly. Honestly Sakura, what got into you? Why aren't you on your mission? Asagi asked, which prompted her younger sister to hang her head in shame. I was called back, and then that Hamura guy told me that my sis was partnered with a horrible and nasty person. That's why I was so worked up. I thought maybe a bad guy had tricked you or something. The tomboy Taemin and explained while rubbing her arm. Hamura. Hamura Mitakado. Asagi asked her sibling for the sake of certainty, her question prompting the orange tea to nod. Hamura. Who's that? I don't recognize that name. Naruto asked while scratching his head, though from the sounds of it, Asagi was at least familiar with the name. He is one of the Sandame Hokage's old teammates and advisors. I can't say that I know him all that well, but from the few times I met him I got a feeling that he wasn't to be trusted. It seems that he tried to drive a wedge between us by tricking my sister into thinking you were just another gold digger, most probably so that I could be pushed into accepting Sasuke Chiha as my partner. The almighty Taemin and explained with a deep frown. Seriously why are people so obsessed with Sasuke? The Yuzumaki asked in an exasperated manner. What was next? Some creepy ass Sasuke worshipping cult. The asshole's fangirls were but steps away from crossing into that territory for crying out loud. Ugh. I'm such an idiot. I'm really sorry for all the trouble sis. I'm sorry to you too, Naruto. I was really mean to you and I'm sorry for pushing you. Sakura spoke with a small sniffle, the tomboy Taemin and now looking like a hurt puppy. Hey. I can't be mad at you. You were just worried about your sister. Thanks for the apology though, I accept. Naruto stated with a broad grin, which caused the orange tea to nod in thanks. She then hummed thoughtfully as she adopted a thinking pose and took in his features. You know sis he's really handsome. I really like those adorable whisker markings. MMM I just knew you'd pick a cutie pie. Sakura mused aloud with a small blush, giving the Jinchuriki a sultry stare that made him gulp a bit. While the elder sibling was calm and mature, it seemed like the younger one was more open and impulsive with her emotions. We can talk about this later. Asagi spoke quietly to her sister, which caused Naruto to raise an eyebrow. Talk about what exactly? He shrugged and decided not to ask about it, figuring that it was a sibling's only type of subject. Come on Naruto. We still need to get your picture taken for your registration and passport. Asagi spoke as she took her partner's hand, and they walked into the academy side by side with her younger sister following close behind them. Unbeknownst to them a certain self-proclaimed elite was watching them with resentment burning in his eyes. Hey Asagi you don't have to answer if you won't want to, but what did your sister mean by you getting betrayed again? Did something happen in the past? The whiskered teen questioned. In response, the brunette gave her younger sister a small glare, while the orange teen mouthed profuse apologies. The almighty Taemin inside as she ran a hand through her hair and spoke it's fine. I would have had to tell you eventually, though I was hoping it'd be later rather than sooner. Some years ago I frequently worked with Itachi Ichiha during his time in the Anbu. We were very close. Itachi? As in Sasuke's big brother? The clan killer himself. 
The whiskered teen asked for confirmation to be certain he had heard right, and as expected Asagi gave a slow nod. Naruto scratched at one of his whisker markings as he mused, I saw him around the academy a few times whenever he picked up Sasuke before the massacre. I never really talked to him, but he seemed like a nice guy. Were you too or am he left his unfinished question hanging, unsure if it'd be rude to ask, but Asagi seemed to pick up on his question and answered him anyway. Were we what? Lovers. Romantically involved. No. No. Nothing at all like that. It'd be more accurate to say we were like siblings. He was kind of like a brother to me. I had considered making him a partner, but I didn't want him to feel pressured into having to choose between me and his family. Then the massacre happened and he was gone. No reason or warning given. Just gone. The legendary Taemonin spoke with a wistful expression on her face. I'm awfully sorry to hear that. I can't imagine what that must have been like. The whiskered teen spoke somberly, now kind of wishing he hadn't dug into that. It seemed like an old wound for the almighty Taemonin and a pretty sensitive subject. At this, Sakura immediately piped in to change the subject Hey, Naruto-kun. I still feel like you let me off a little too easily. I know. I'll buy you dinner. Wherever you want. How's that? She asked in a bubbly manner while hugging the Jinchuriki from behind, her soft breast squishing against the back of his head, making him blush a bit. Well, if you insist I know just the place we can go. Naruto spoke with a small grin. I look forward to seeing the place you choose. Asagi stated with a warm smile, glad to see her sister now trying to make an effort to bond with her partner, especially after that misunderstanding. Though inwardly the famed Taemonin was thinking to herself Amara. Keep meddling in my affairs and you won't leave me any choice but to abuse my authority a little. Something I do not like to do without just cause. Really you're a fan of the Princess Gale series so happy. Sakura squealed in delight at the Yuzumaki, breaking her sister out of her musings. It would seem the Agawa household was going to get a lot more lively from here on. Shut up. All of you. Leave me alone. Shouted the voice of one Aruka Yamino from a television set as one Aimichiraku could be seen cleaning some dishes with a small chuckle. The clip had been replayed numerous times since the Chunin exploded on live TV, and the news media had practically crucified him. It was pretty safe to say that he was gonna lose his job over this, and good riddance too. Naruto had plentiful stories to share about his teacher, and none of them made him sound endearing in the slightest, and for good reason. Speaking of a certain blonde, she and her father couldn't help but feel glad that Naruto had been chosen as a Taemonin's partner, and to be chosen by the legendary Asagi Agawa no less. No doubt he was in some fancy restaurant, gorging on some gourmet food with a one of the most gorgeous and desired women in Kanoha on his arm. Hey am. Hey old man Tucci. Shouted a very familiar voice as a trio of figures entered the Raymond stand. Almost automatically the waitress put on her most charming smile and greeted welcome to Ichi, she paused midway as she registered who exactly had entered and saw the form of Naruto himself accompanied not by one, but by two women. The famed Agawa's siblings. Eh the waitress yelled in surprise, her eyes almost bugging out of her head at the sight. Wa Naruto kun the Agawa's sisters in my shop. I I could die happy. Tuchi shouted as he cried animal tears at the fact his humble raiment stand had been graced by the presence of such famed celebrities. So you could have chosen anywhere you wanted, but chose this place huh? I wasn't expecting this. Sakura spoke with an amused grin as she set herself down on a stool with her sister and the whiskered teen doing the same. You won't find better Raymond anywhere else. Besides, the Ichirakus have always been good to me. Even spotted a few bowls for me when I was short on money. I'll never forget about that. The whiskered teen replied with a nostalgic smile, earning a gushing awe from the orange tea. The Ichirakus managed to break out of their stupor, with the Raymond chef stating, we heard about you getting picked on the news Naruto-kun. Congratulations. You made the big time. The whiskered teen chuckled as he nodded and then said with a broad grin that's not all. I finally got my shinobi headband and license registered. He then pointed towards the headband that was tied around his arm and produced his license to the Ichirakus, the picture depicting the blonde standing with his arms crossed and a serious expression on his face. Truthfully, Aikinda wanted to put on some kabuki-style makeup to really mark the occasion and stand out. Naruto added as he pocketed his license, his words earning an eye roll from his partner. It would have stood out all right, in all the wrong ways. If you want people to take you seriously as a shinobi, then you need to treat the position and all that it entails seriously as well. Remember, a person's reputation means a lot in the shinobi world. You want to have a reputation for being reliable and trustworthy, yes? Asagi asked him, which made the young blonde nod his head in understanding. I got it. I got it. He muttered sheepishly, with the Agawa siblings giggling a little. So what's good here? Any recommendations Naruto-kun? Sakura asked since she had never visited this place before. She was kind of eager to see just how good the Raymond was here. You can't really go wrong with anything here. 
Though I think the Maizo Raymon is good for first-time visitors. At any rate, old man. Hook me up with the Yuzumaki Grand Special. The whiskered teen spoke excitedly with a large grin. Wait. You have a Raymond bowl named after you? Asagi asked with a raised eyebrow, her question making the Ichirakus laugh a little in response. Ah. Naruto-kun has been a regular of ours for years. To commemorate his patronage, we named a Raymond bowl after him in his honor. Tucci explained with a hearty chuckle. Ooh. Sounds interesting. I want one too. Sakura spoke while clapping her hands excitedly. I shall have one as well. Asagi requested, then she raised an eyebrow upon noticing the hesitation in the father-daughter pair. Aim cleared her throat and asked are you sure about that? It's a big bull. Like really big. The sisters tilted their heads a little in confusion. A big bull. Just how big could it possibly be? Ignoring the warning, they confirmed that they wanted the Yuzumaki special as well barely a few seconds after placing their order, the Yuzumaki himself was snickering quietly to himself. You might regret that. He warned with a sly smile, making the siblings sweat drop. What could possibly be so daunting about a bowl of Raymond? They received their answer minutes later when the Ichirakus planted three enormous bowls before them. The sight made the two sisters' eyes widen in shock. There seemed to be enough in just one bowl to feed at least ten people. Goodness. Now I see why the grand part was added. Asagi muttered, suddenly feeling a little intimidated by the massive serving. Could Naruto seriously eat this whole thing? That didn't seem physically possible. Quite the specimen, eh? It's something of a challenge we started here. Anyone who can finish the whole bowl gets it for free. Tucci explained with a proud smirk, a little twinkle shining in his eye as he then added, only two people have ever been able to accomplish this feat. One of them being Naruto-kun himself. Who's the other one? The Jinchuriki asked since he was unaware that someone else was capable of performing this task. At his question, A.M. giggled and spoke sorry. That's a secret, feel free to guess though. Naruto shrugged his shoulders as he began to dig into his bowl with gusto, while the Agawa sisters glanced down at their own bowls. Sakura slapped both of her cheeks before grabbing a pair of chopsticks for herself before shouting Yosh. The Agawas don't back down before a challenge. Come on sis. Let's conquer this monster of a Raymond bowl. Asagi smirked in amusement as she too grabbed her own pair of chopsticks and replied confidently, let's do it. The orange tea wasted no time in digging into her own meal, the older Agawa sister doing the same. To the sister's surprise, the Raymond tasted amazing. It had a spicy kick to it that was just balanced enough to where the spiciness didn't overpower the rest of the ingredients. Asagi especially liked the pork slices and the shrimp. The broth was also pretty good, having a nice thick and meaty taste to it. After several minutes of eating, the sisters finally felt like they had reached the halfway point. Only to realize that they hadn't even gotten a quarter of the way through their bowls. Th. There is still more. Sakura whimpered, her previous confidence slowly draining away as she stared at the seemingly bottomless abyss that was her Raymond bowl. We mustn't retreat. Keep at it. Asagi spoke encouragingly as she began eating again, Sakura doing the same. Their pace was far slower than before. Each time they finished a mouthful, their bodies screamed at them to stop. However, their pride refused to let them quit. Meanwhile, the Yuzumaki himself was nearly finished with his own meal. The Ichirakus were used to seeing him demolish bowl after bowl, and thus didn't seem surprised in the slightest. The Taimanin were putting on a brave front, but it was obvious they were steadily losing steam. I don't understand it. Why isn't he having trouble with this? Sakura whispered to her sister, a hint of bitterness present in her tone. Asagi looked like she wanted to say something, but then decided against it. Seriously though, just how was he able to keep going? Was his stomach connected to some sort of pocket dimension, was he hiding a black hole in his belly? He just kept on eating and didn't show any signs of stopping. Well, this is Naruto Uzumaki we're talking about. It's no surprise that he can handle it. You on the other hand. Tucci chuckled as he gave a quick glance towards the sisters, who were currently glaring daggers at the whiskered teen. You guys don't have to force yourselves, you know. Naruto spoke, finally pausing his eating and looking up at the duo with a raised eyebrow. Nonsense. We've come too far to turn back now. I've cut down entire platoons of enemy shinobi, I refuse to be defeated by a Raymond bull. Asagi spoke with her chest puffed out proudly, a determined expression etched on her face. Right. I'm not giving up either. Even if it kills me. Sakura exclaimed with a fiery gaze. Naruto sweat dropped and gave a quiet aha, uh -huh, believing that this was not going to end well for the Igawa sisters. Minutes later, and the two women were slumped over on the countertop, their stomachs making gurgling noises as they found themselves unable to continue on. How does he do it? It's just not natural. Ugh. My tummy hurts. I feel like I'm gonna pop. The orange tea whimpered with an I'm tears streaming down her face. Ugh. Don't mention popping. Please. I already feel sick. 
Asagi mumbled as she tried to massage her sore stomach, the sensation reminding her of her earlier days as a taman and during her intense training sessions. But this was way worse. Hey, don't feel bad. There are a lot of people who have tried and failed to finish this bowl. AM said while giving the two a sympathetic smile. Yeah, so you didn't do that bad. Not many make it to the halfway point, fewer still who make it so far on their first try. I gotta admit though, I didn't think you'd manage to last this long. So I'm impressed. Tucci complimented, which made the Taman and blush slightly in embarrassment. Defeated by a bowl of Raymond. Oh the shame. The almighty Taman and muttered dramatically, earning a laugh from her blonde partner. Hey, don't get too hung up about it. It's no big deal. I'm just a professional. Naruto stated with a broad grin and a cocky thumb gesture, his statement earning an eye roll and a snort from his new partner. Professional glutton is more like it. Asagi quipped, causing the blonde to snicker. Oh please, like you were any better. Sakura spoke, causing her sister to blush in embarrassment. Well, you can't be the best at everything. I mean, I suck at math, but that's just me. Everyone has a weak spot. No one's perfect. Naruto reasoned, which earned him a round of nods from the other occupants in the Raymond shop. He's got a point. AM conceded with a shrug, her words making the sisters nod in agreement. Well, at any rate, thank you very much for the meal. It was most delicious. The blue-haired Taemin spoke, her body paling a bit as she tried to resist the urge to vomit due to her stomach being filled to overcapacity. It was. I don't think I've ever eaten anything this tasty. We'll be sure to come back again sometime. Sakura added, her stomach also hurting due to overeating, as she shakily pulled out a wallet from an unknown hiding place and slapped a large wad of bills on the counter before collapsing. That'll be more than enough. Thanks for your patronage. Tucci spoke, his voice laced with gratitude as he picked up the money and pocketed it. Come on guys, let's go home. In a few minutes. I don't think I can move right now. The tomboy tamen and whined as she felt as if her tummy was about to split open. Why did that Raymond have to taste so good? I feel the same. The almighty Taman and muttered softly. The three of them sat there in silence for a minute or two, with the Ichirakus performing some cleaning. Sakura decided to break the silence by asking Hey Naruto. How about you tell us a little about yourself? I want to get to know the guy my big sister picked. She smiled a little when she saw her sister blushing slightly. It would seem that Asagi had really taken a shine to him. There isn't much to say. I'm an orphan that lived in a crappy apartment and off of a stipend. I was picked on and bullied a lot in school with Aruka seriously having it out for me. It was because of him I kept getting held back since he kept singling me out. He surmised as he took a sip of tea. Seriously? A teacher picking on a student? What kind of a monster is he? Sakura muttered with a glare, her eyes narrowing in anger at the fact that the one who was supposed to guide and protect the children under his care had actually hurt one of them instead, or at least harmed their education. That one right there. The whiskered teen stated while jabbing a finger in the direction of the overhead television, which was still replaying the moment the tune exploded on live TV. Oh. The orange tea replied simply with her face blank before her eyes lit up in recognition oh. Wait a sec. I saw him in the Hokage's office when I got back to the village. I didn't hear everything, but it sounded like the Sandane was chewing out this Aruka guy. Really? The young blonde asked curiously, his eyebrow arching up at this new bit of information. Yup. I didn't catch it all, but I definitely heard the words grudge and incompetence. If I don't know any better, I'd say that someone's gonna be getting the boot. Or worse. The orange tea snickered, a rather cruel gleam flashing in her sapphire orbs. Well, he deserved it. Anyways, I gotta ask, what kind of training are we gonna do Asagi? I want to learn everything that you can teach me. The young Jinchuriki stated. He was determined to become stronger, not just for his sake, but for those he cares about. Additionally, he also wanted to be useful to Asagi as well. I believe it would be prudent to start off by practicing with the weapons you shall be receiving. I also recall you mentioning that you need some practice in Tejutsu. The blue-haired Taemanin spoke since she believed it would be wise to start him off with the basics. I see. Oh. I almost forgot. You also need to teach me how I can transfer my chakra to you. That's why you need me after all. He stated matter-of-factly since without his chakra, her combat capabilities would be somewhat limited. If she used too much of the yakai swimming in her body, there would be consequences. Huh? Big sis. You haven't told him? Sakura asked with a raised eyebrow, earning a confused look from the Yuzumaki. Told me what? He questioned, his eyebrows furrowing a bit, recalling that the last time he had asked, Asagi had been rather evasive about it. Can we please save this conversation until we get home? It isn't something that should be discussed openly. The almighty Taemin implored, making the younger Taemin sigh and nod her head. Okay. Fine. Sorry. Sakura muttered softly as she slumped over a bit, causing the Jinchuriki to sweat drop. 
Just what the hell was she talking about? From the sounds of it, it was a sensitive topic. Not to mention Asagi seemed a little embarrassed about it. Why? Was he missing something? I'll tell you everything once we're home. The blue-haired woman stated with a soft sigh, causing the young Yuzumaki to give a nod of acknowledgement, accepting her promise. You two feeling better now? He asked out of concern, noting that the sisters were no longer slouched over and were instead sitting straight up. Yeah. My tummy feels a little less full. We should be able to head home now. The tomboy Taemin declared as she pushed herself up to her feet. Her older sister following her example. Alright. Let's get going then. Naruto said with a small smile, his gaze lingering on the beautiful Taemin, taking a moment to admire the way her blue hair gently swayed with each movement. He shook his head a bit to clear his thoughts before standing up as well and followed the duo out of the shop. Have a safe trip home. Tucci spoke as he and his daughter waved as the trio began their walk back to the Agawa residence. It wasn't long before they reached the gates of the Taemin district where a guard was stationed at the gate. This time it was a woman carrying a Najinata with dark brown hair, an impossibly large bust and a black ribbon that resembled rabbit ears. Naruto, this is Mizuki Shiranui. Nui-chan, this is Naruto, my partner. Asagi introduced with a gentle smile, causing the teen in question to blush a bit from the warm greeting. Partner. Ooh, Asagi has finally found someone. Shiranui remarked, her eyes taking on a playful gleam as she gave a knowing smile and took in the Jinchuriki's features before adding my my. He's quite a young one. A handsome boy as well. She giggled as the boy blushed even harder. Oh, stop it. You're embarrassing him. The blue-haired Taman and chuckled, giving the woman a soft slap on the arm. It's a pleasure to meet you. The blonde spoke with a bow, not wanting to offend the Taman. The pleasure is all mine. Now then, passports. Shiranui requested, prompting both the Agawa sisters and Naruto to produce their passports for entry. After a quick inspection, the Najinata user nodded in acceptance. Everything appears to be in order. Have a pleasant day. She said with a friendly smile, opening the gate for them and allowing them entry. We will. Goodbye, Nui-chan. Sakura replied, the trio waving goodbye as they walked through the open gate. She seems nice. Naruto commented once the gates closed behind them. This reminded him, sooner or later he'd have to get to know his neighbors. From what he could see, a lot of Taemin were really nice or at least decent sorts of people. Ah. Shiranui is a reliable one and very strong. She also has a daughter, Yukikas. I think you like her. The almighty Taemin spoke as they entered the Agawa residence at long last. After removing their footwear, Sakura moved onto the couch and stated okay Asagi. You know the drill. There's no procrastinating now. You gotta have the talk with Naruto. The orange tea added the last part in a warning tone. The brunette said nothing to her younger sister and instead gently took her young partner by the wrist and guided him to their bedroom. She shut the door and locked it behind her to ensure they had some privacy. Not that she expected her sister to eavesdrop, but more likely it was out of habit. Okay, I've been dying to know. What the heck did she mean by the talk? Naruto asked, his curiosity reaching an all-time high. Just what in the heck was going on? Why did Asagi seem like she desperately wanted to avoid the subject? Asagi sighed before speaking I've been wanting to wait until the time was right, but I suppose this is as good a time as any. I was hoping to hold off on this since I didn't want to force it down your throat. She muttered while brushing aside some of her hair as the blonde teen deposited his bags of recently purchased casual wear off to the side. Please tell me this isn't gonna be a birds and bees thing. I already went through that once and that was the most embarrassing, cringeworthy and painful 30 minutes of my life. Please don't make me go through that again. I'm begging you. He pleaded, his face flushing at the memory. Don't worry. That's not what this is about. At least, it isn't really that sort of talk. The almighty Taman stated calmly, making him breathe a sigh of relief. Wait, seriously he asked, his eyes widening at the news. That was. Unexpected. Unfortunately, yes. Asagi confirmed with a soft sigh, her cheeks still flushed. As you know, we Taman cannot naturally produce chakra by ourselves. That is why we need a partner to transfer their chakra to us. The most efficient means is absorbing our partner's chakra through their semen. She explained, her face still burning bright red. Oh. Wow. So, uh. You were afraid of how I would react if you told me about this? He guessed, his brain still processing this new bit of information. Yes. She answered honestly. I understand that you're probably upset or at the very least, uncomfortable. I wanted to ease you into it instead of, as I previously mentioned, forcing it on you. Then my sister had to go and tip you off. This isn't something we tame and speak of openly. Imagine if this became public knowledge. Every pervert for miles around would come banging on our doors to take advantage of us. The blue net explained with a shudder. I can see your point. It's alright. 
I'm not angry or upset, I was just surprised. I can understand why you were hesitant to talk about it. He stated, his words earning him a relieved sigh from Asagi. It seemed he was taking this news in stride. Thank you. I'm sorry. This must be a lot to take in. The blue-haired warrior spoke, her embarrassment fading somewhat as her heart began to race a bit, the young Uzumaki's reaction was the polar opposite of what she had been expecting. She was sort of expecting him to lash out or be upset at this news. She was afraid that he may think he was being taken advantage of somehow. He was taking it rather well all things considered. In Naruto's eyes, it all made a lot of sense now. Why Taemin were so selective of their partners, why they were so protective of their privacy and territory, and why Asagi initially dodged his questioning when he first arrived. She didn't want to burden him with such a thing. She wanted to wait until the time was right for him to explain in a way that would not overwhelm him, but now her hand had been forced. At the very least, it was now done and over with. I would understand if you wish to sleep separately. I'll understand if this is too much for you. It's only natural that Asagi was cut off as the blonde pulled her into a sudden hug, his warm embrace silencing her. Asagi. It's okay. I already said that I'm not mad. I'm not going anywhere. You've been nothing but kind to me and I'd like to return the favor. So don't worry, I'll be here for you, always. He said softly as he felt her relax and return his embrace. Thank you Naruto. You have no idea how much this means to me. She replied, tears threatening to spill from her eyes. His acceptance and compassion was like a bomb for her soul. To feel a warmth that she hadn't felt before, to have a person in her life that she could truly trust and depend on despite the fact they had only known each other for a short time. She had chosen very well indeed when she made Naruto her partner and gave the oath of marriage. They embraced for a few moments before they broke it off and each took a step back. So, is there anything else I should know? Wouldn't it be possible to transfer my chakra through, say, skin contact? The whiskered teen asked curiously, his question earning a small chuckle from his partner. Not right now, no. Though, we will have to begin your training as soon as your equipment arrives. I'll let you decide which weapon you would like to practice with first. I'm certain you'll do fine. As for your other question, it is possible, but not nearly as efficient as it is compared to the absorption of semen. She answered and smiled softly, her face returning to its normal shade as she sat down on the bed and patted the spot beside her, which he sat down in. All right, I won't let you down. I'll work and do my best. He declared, his tone holding a note of determination, eager to please his partner and make her proud of him. That's the spirit. Well, you should get some rest. I'm certain that you must be tired. Tomorrow, I'll take you on a tour of the Taimanan district. I'll even introduce you to a few friends of mine. Asagi offered, her voice holding a note of excitement. Really? That sounds like fun. I'd love to meet more Taimanan, besides, I guess I should get to know my new neighbors anyway. I'd hate to be a stranger in my own home. The young Jinchuriki mused. Excellent. Well, then, get some rest. We have a long day ahead of us. I think you like the community center. Asagi spoke with a broad smile, her words earning a small gasp of surprise from the whiskered teen. They had a freaking community center too, what didn't they have? And again, he supposed it made sense for the Taimanan to have something like that to unwind in their downtime and bond with each other. There had to be plenty of Taimanan that had mutual interests and hobbies to bond over. I can't wait. The Yuzumaki replied as he slipped under the covers and made himself comfortable. Well, good night Naruto. Sleep tight. The almighty Taimanin cooed softly, giving his forehead a gentle peck and making him blush lightly as she snuggled up close to him. Good night Asagi. He replied as he slowly drifted off to sleep, his breathing evening out as he allowed his mind and body to rest. Sweet dreams. The brunette murmured affectionately, her arms wrapping around him and pulling him close. She smiled gently as she rested her head on his shoulder. It wasn't long before her sapphire eyes fluttered shut and her consciousness faded with the Yuzumaki following close behind her. The next morning. Naruto and the Agawa sisters made their way down the road to the Taimanan district's community center, the Yuzumaki feeling quite eager to see what was in store for him there and to get to know other Taimanan. Who knows? Perhaps he could even make some new friends. Asagi and Sakura were both wearing a pair of tracksuits, dark blue and pink respectively. The blonde himself was wearing a simple t-shirt and cargo shorts, along with his shinobi sandals. Hmm. I can't wait to introduce you to everyone. Asagi mused with a serene smile, earning a small chuckle from the whiskered teen who responded in a cheeky manner, that eager to show me off. Maybe a little bit. She spoke with a good-natured laugh, the three of them soon arriving at their destination, a rather large building located in the center of the district. The structure was three stories tall with a glass window covering the front, and the sign above the entrance was a stylized emblem of the Taimanan symbol, with a kanji for community underneath it. Here we are. 
Asagi spoke as they approached the establishment, she couldn't help but smile, while her sister giggled upon seeing Naruto's eyes light up. Wow. It's so huge. The Jinchuriki exclaimed, taking in the sight before him, his blue eyes gazing around at the many rooms that could be seen from outside, along with a sign that listed the many activities available. There were various activities available such as swimming, bowling, table tennis, and even a library. It was an impressive facility, no doubt about that. He wondered what else could be inside. They stepped inside the building proper, Naruto following the sisters as they entered a room marked bowling. Inside were six lanes with two balls per lane and a computer system to record points, a snack bar and a small lounge area for watching the game. There was also a small bar stocked with non-alcoholic beverages, and on the other side of the building was a large arcade area loaded with all manner of games. Whoa. And this is only the first floor. Naruto mused aloud with the Agawa sisters nodding their heads. Well, if we're going to train hard, may as well play hard too. There's lots to do here. We could bowl, play ping pong, or maybe even shoot some hoops. The orange tea suggested with a grin. Always wanted to try my hand at bowling. I never got to experience any of this kind of stuff. He spoke, earning a gasp of surprise from the younger of the Agawa siblings. You've never gone bowling before. You poor thing. We need to fix this. Sakura cried, grabbing him by the arm and dragging him to the lane, her sister chuckling at the display. Growing up, Naruto had very few friends and fewer opportunities to engage in such activities, such as bowling. As of now, he planned on making up for lost time and having fun with the Agawa sister. Anything I need to know about how to play? He asked since he wasn't familiar with the rules. It's pretty simple. Basically you throw a ball at some pins and then try to knock as many down as possible. If you get all 10 down, it's called a strike. Oh, and try to avoid accidentally rolling your ball into the gutter lanes. Asagi explained, earning a nod of understanding from the young Uzumaki. That sounded really straightforward. You go first, Naruto. Show us your stuff. The tomboy tamed and spoke encouragingly, earning a nod from the blonde. Naruto grabbed a purple-colored bowling ball and moved to the end of the lane, drawing his arm back before he hurled the ball down the lane, striking the middle pin and causing a chain reaction of pins falling, his ball bouncing off the sidewall and coming to a stop before the final pin, which then fell over with a clatter. Nicely done. The almighty Taman and grinned broadly, impressed by the display. Ha! Hey, beginner's luck. My turn. Sakura playfully stated as she picked up a bright red ball and rolled the ball straight down the middle of the lane. Naruto and Asagi watched as the orange tea threw the ball, the sphere colliding with the pins and knocking them all down with ease. Yeah. Strike. Not bad, huh? Sakura exclaimed with a proud smirk, earning a chuckle from her older sister and a grin from the whiskered teen. Nice shot, Sakura. The Yuzumaki spoke with a thumbs up, his words earning a blush from the orange tea who scratched the back of her head sheepishly. They were interrupted by a voice that spoke Ara, Ara. It seems you're having fun. The trio turned and were met by the form of Shiranui who had a gentle smile on her face. She was accompanied by a girl that Naruto didn't recognize. She looked about his own age with tanned skin, long brown hair and purple eyes. Ah, Nui-chan. Nice to see you. Oh, I see Yukikas is with you. Asagi greeted the woman warmly, turning her attention to the girl with the violet eyes, who had a soft smile on her face. Naruto-san, this is my daughter. Yukikas. Shiranui spoke as she introduced her child to the whiskered teen. He blinked his eyes a few times and looked between the mother and daughter pair. He honestly couldn't see the resemblance. You were just thinking how different we looked, especially our chest sizes, weren't you? Yukika spoke with some bitterness since she had something of a complex about her small chest. Why you're reading my mind? He asked incredulously, earning a chuckle from the young Taemanin as he wondered if she had a special ability or a technique that enabled her to read the thoughts of others. No dummy. Just your face. It was written all over it. You should probably work on not wearing your emotions on your sleeve. The brunette replied bluntly. Uh. Right. I admit that I was thinking you two looked pretty different, but I wasn't really thinking about your. Um. You know. He spoke a little shyly but honestly. He hadn't really meant to be insulting, or he certainly didn't want to sound it. Sensing that he was being honest, Yukikas smirked and spoke in a more casual manner. Sorry, I guess I am a bit sensitive. I didn't mean to lash out at you. It's nice to meet you, Naruto-san. Why yeah, likewise. You can just call me Naruto if you want. No need to be formal. He replied. Okay, then, Naruto-kun. Yukikas nodded her head with an easy smile on her face. MMM. Perhaps we should have a friendly competition. Naruto and Asagi versus me and Yukikas. Shiranui suggested, her words earning a smirk from Asagi. Very well, you're on. The blue-haired Taemanin accepted the challenge as she turned her attention towards the young Yuzumaki. So, are you up for it? She asked, earning a nod from the blonde. 
I'd love to. Let's have some fun. Naruto answered with a smile. Excellent. Asagi spoke as she clenched her fist, her sister smirking as she reset the scoreboard and then went off to get snacks and drinks for everyone. Naruto picked a ball and moved to the lane, his attention focused entirely on the pins. Taking a deep breath, he exhaled slowly and drew his arm back before he let loose a pitch, his ball gliding down the alley and crashing into the pins, knocking all ten of them down with a clatter. Wow, excellent work, Naruto-kun. Seems like you got skills. Yukikiz applauded the blonde's display, earning a smile from the Jinchuriki in question. Thanks, though to be honest this is my first time playing. He admitted while rubbing the back of his head. Still impressive. The brunette remarked, the group's attention then turning towards the older members of their group. Eh, uh, so, Asagi, you ready? Shiranyui questioned her friend, earning a challenging smirk from the blue-haired Taimanin. Always. Show me what you got, Nui-chan. Asagi replied as the two of them made their way to the lane and picked up a ball each, the pair taking a few moments to ready themselves. Chiranui was the first to move, the purple-haired woman drawing her arm back and pitching the sphere down the lane, the orb colliding with the pins and sending several flying into the air, though the majority remained standing. Asagi took her turn and pitched her ball down the lane, her ball gliding down the center and crashing into the pins, knocking nine down in the process. HMPH, not bad. Shiranui spoke, her words earning a chuckle from her friend. I'll say. Nice job, Nui. The almighty Taimanin commented. Oh, come on. It's not over yet. Yukikas piped up, her words earning a chuckle from the group. You're right, dear. Shiranui chuckled before turning her attention towards her daughter. The group all had a good laugh, their spirits high and their moods light and relaxed. Sakura then returned, skillfully balancing a trio of trays loaded with snacks and drinks. She held one in each hand with the third being balanced atop her head, I brought snacks, I didn't know what you like Naruto-kun, so I brought some of everything. She spoke as she placed the trays down on the table, revealing the variety of snacks and drinks that the orange tea had selected for them. Thanks, Sakura-chan. Naruto smiled at the younger Agawa, earning a nod of acknowledgement from the orange tea, who had a warm smile on her face. The whiskered teen eyed the various snacks, large and soft-looking pretzels, mozzarella sticks with marinara sauce, chicken wings with a variety of sauces for dipping, french fries smothered in cheese and bacon bits, the list went on. I think we've got everything. So, let's dig in. Sakura spoke, her words earning nods of agreement from the rest of the group. Each of them grabbed a drink and snack, enjoying a small break from their game. As they ate and drank, the group talked and laughed, a warm atmosphere enveloping them as they conversed. So, how are things going with your new partner, Naruto-kun? Any trouble adjusting to the lifestyle? Shiranui asked curiously, earning a smile from the Yuzumaki. Nah, things are good. We're getting along well. Heh. Asagi has been kinda spoiling me a bit. Though the sudden change in lifestyle is a bit overwhelming, Asagi has been trying to help me ease into it. I look forward to training with her soon. He replied. Ah, glad to hear it. Still, be careful out there. Things can go awfully wrong very quickly. Shiranui spoke in a warning tone that came off as unusually strong. There was a pained expression in her eyes as well. Is something wrong Shiranui-san? The whiskered teen asked curiously. Hmm? Oh, it's nothing. Forgive me, Naruto-kun. Sometimes old memories come back and haunt me. She spoke with a small sigh. What kind of memories? He asked curiously. I would rather not speak of it. It's not a pleasant story. The brown-haired woman replied, a dark expression forming on her face as the Yuzumaki realized he had, rather idiotically, stepped on a landmine. Sorry. He spoke apologetically, feeling guilty for touching upon what was undoubtedly painful memories for Shiranyui and for spoiling the mood. Don't worry about it, Naruto-kun. It's not your fault. You didn't know. Shiranyui spoke quickly as she waved him off, a somewhat forced smile on her face. Deciding to quickly change the subject, Yukikiz piped in and asked a random question so uh, Naruto. Do you know how large your chakra reserves are? Instead of the whiskered blonde answering, Asagi beat him to the punch as she responded, I attempted to use a chakra measurement device when I first met Naruto-kun. His reserves are so massive that it overloaded the device and made it explode in my hand. This piece of information earned looks of shock from the various Taimanin, as they all stared open-mouthed and wide-eyed at Naruto. Whoa. Are you serious? Damn, that's impressive. Yukikiz exclaimed. I don't doubt that. I'm willing to bet his reserves are far greater than those of even a cage-level ninja. Asagi spoke with a slight giggle. Why a good-looking, kind-hearted and massive chakra reserves no fair. You really lucked out on this one sis. I'm kinda jealous now. If you hadn't snatched him up, I definitely would have. The tomboy Taimanin whined with the tears in her eyes. Sakura-chan. It's not nice to say stuff like that. 
Naruto huffed, his face a bright shade of crimson as the young Uzumaki averted his gaze. Well, I wasn't lying. I definitely would have tried to claim you. If my sister hadn't already taken you. Sakura spoke honestly. D thanks, Sakura-chan. He stuttered out unsure of how to respond, earning a grin from the younger of the Agawa sisters. He glanced at Asagi who seemed unbothered by her sibling's words and instead seemed to be smiling as she gave her partner a little reassuring wink. Come to think of it, I don't remember seeing you around at the academy whenever I went there looking for a partner. The orange team used, earning a sigh from the Jinchuriki. Probably because Aruka was trying to keep me out of sight and mind, fearing that I might get picked and then finally get out from under his thumb. The prick. Naruto muttered bitterly. Ma, let's not hover over this subject. We still have a game to finish. Asagi spoke in order to get things back on track. Everyone nodded with both Naruto and Asagi once again squaring off against the mother and daughter pair. Both sides wanting to claim the victory as they grinned defiantly at one another, though before they could continue their game, they were interrupted by a female voice that greeted Yo. Naruto. Everyone looked in the direction of the voice and saw the form of the orange-haired Taimanen, Mika leaning against her bazooka with a cigar in her mouth, with a very annoyed expression on her face. mika san Good to see you again. There's something you need. You look kinda. Pissed off. The Jinchuriki spoke a little fearfully since this didn't look like a good omen. Some weird kid is at the gates demanding to see you and Asagi. He's really damn annoying. Mika explained with a huff. Weird kid? What's this weird kid look like? Asagi asked with a raised eyebrow. Who in the world could be asking for them? Some really pushy and demanding brat with a funny haircut that looks like a duck's ass. Gate guard on duty asked me to find you too. I checked to see if you were home and you weren't there, luckily the neighbors pointed me in the right direction. The flame tame and explained while taking a drag from her cigar. From that description, there was no room for doubt. I'll handle this. Sakura. You mind taking my spot? The whiskered teen asked, earning a nod from the orange tea who had a cocky grin on her face. No problem. I'll be sure to defend your honor Naruto-kun. Sakura exclaimed as she picked up a green bowling ball and moved over to the lane to take his place, though Asagi had a look of some concern. The almighty Taimanen and pursed her lips for a moment and asked Naruto. Do you want me to go with you? Something feels off. She had a strong feeling that things weren't going to go smoothly and she wanted to be at the blonde side to prevent any unnecessary violence. Appreciate the thought, but I can handle this by myself. Though before I go, I gotta ask. Do you think this might involve Itachi? That's the only viable reason I can think of that he'd be asking for you, given what you told me before. The whiskered teen asked since there were only two things that could possibly pique Sasuke's interest, power and Itachi. Maybe? I'm unsure. I never really interacted with Itachi's family, and I don't think he ever made mention of me, at least not directly to them. I think he was afraid that his father might have tried to push for some sort of political marriage between me and Itachi. Asagi answered, which made her young partner give an awe of understanding. Still, from her reaction, it wouldn't be impossible for Sasuke to know, especially if someone might have tipped him off. I'll take care of this and be right back. He promised before marching off to deal with perhaps one of the most annoying and entitled people in the village. Honestly, he'd rather stay and continue bullying, but he figured that ignoring the problem wouldn't make it go away. Might as well bite the bullet and get it over and done with now than have to suffer an even worse headache later. It wasn't very long before he reached the Taman and District's gates where a woman with blue hair done up in a ponytail and red eyes wielding a large battle axe could be seen staring down the Ichiha himself, the both of them looking extremely annoyed with one another. Do you have any idea who I am woman? I'm Sasuke Ichiha. I demand that you let me in now. The self-proclaimed elite shouted with a snarl, causing the axe-wielding woman to roll her eyes and give a dismissive wave of her hand. I wouldn't care if you were the Hokage, the Daimyo, the Rikidu Senen or even their damned ass wiper. No passport, no invitation, no entry. She bellowed out the last part with enough force to knock the Ichiha off his feet, her eyes glaring dangerously as she seemed to be almost pleading for him to try something foolish so that she may have some sort of excuse to cleave him in two or more pieces. Afternoon. I see we have a problem here. Naruto spoke with a lazy drawl, very much wishing that he was almost anywhere else that Sasuke was not. The gate guard turned towards the whiskered teen and spoke to him in greeting hello. I am Yatsume Murasaki. I take it this is a friend of yours? She asked the last part with a somewhat judging tone to it, prompting the blonde to shake his head. He's no friend of mine. Just a nuisance I can't seem to shake off for some reason. Naruto explained which earned a slow awe of understanding from the pony-tailed Taimanen, who now gave him a pitying look. Where's that Asagi woman? I ask for both of you. Sasu cast in a demanding tone as he crossed his arms. Kami, just hearing that entitled voice of his made the Uzumaki want to puke. She has more important things to deal with. 
was all Naruto said on the matter as he glared at the Uchiha. After a few tense moments of silence, the Avenger scoffed and said whatever. You're the only one I really need anyway. Let's talk. Ichin Churiki raised an eyebrow, wondering what the Uchiha wanted to talk about. He was definitely up to something, no question. He then decided that it would be best to invite him inside. Not only did the Yuzumaki feel safer in the Taimanan district, he was certain that if the Uchiha tried anything in here, then the other Taimanan would step in to maintain order. He recalled seeing a small park nearby where they could talk. It was private enough where they could speak openly, but also public enough that would make him feel safe. Come on then. Let's talk then. Inside. Sorry for the trouble murasaki san The Yuzumaki spoke, directing the last part to the gate guard who simply nodded and allowed the Ichiha to pass upon Naruto's invitation, but her eyes never left the Ichiha as the two boys made their way towards the nearby park. They both sat on a bench together, a small hint of nostalgia coming across the Ichiha's face as he muttered, my mother sometimes took me to this park. Naruto raised an eyebrow at that, almost forgetting that the Taimanan district previously belonged to the Uchiha clan. Did Sasuke have a softer side to him after all? To think it's in the hands of people who aren't Uchiha's. Disgusting. Sasuke added as he spat on the ground. Ah. There was that Uchiha arrogance. What do you want Sasuke? Tell me what it is that you want and then get the hell out. Naruto demanded impatiently. The sooner this was over with the better. Fine then. I want you to break it off with that Asagi woman. The raven-haired youth stated bluntly, which earned a shocked and confused expression from the Jinchuriki, who could only give a confused blah. Sound. Sasuke then continued to speak a worthless loser like you isn't worthy of her. I however can make good use of her. Naruto narrowed his eyes as he spoke angrily make good use. She's a person, not a tool. Why do you care anyway? You have never shown an interest in any girls or women before. What the hell changed? She worked with my brother. She knows him, his power, his technique, with her at my side, I'll have an advantage against him. The Uchiha explained, making the Jinchuriki grimace. So that's how it was. Figures. It all loops back to Itachi. Of course Asuk wasn't interested in Asagi as a woman or as a person, she was just a tool for him to take advantage of, and then probably discard, when he had no more use for her. Of course I don't expect you to do this for free. You'll be compensated. I can pay you, or is it Jutsu that you want? The Uchiha added with a raised eyebrow, hoping to tempt the Yuzumaki away from his partner. No. Was all Naruto stated as he almost leapt off the bench, his hands stuffed inside of his pockets, as his body trembled with rage. No what do you mean no? Sasuke angrily demanded as he got within the Jinchuriki's personal space, their faces now mere inches apart. Do I really need to explain? The answer is no. And oh no. I'm not leaving Asagi. Not for money and not for ninjutsu. If you want intel on Itachi, you could try simply asking her nicely, like a normal and or decent person. But no, that is too much for you is it, you gotta be some asshole that takes things from other people, just to make yourself feel better. Well guess what? I'm not a fucking sellout Sasuke. Naruto shouted as he shoved the Uchiha back to get him out of his face. Sasuke cleared his fist back as if ready to punch the Uzumaki, and only just barely held himself back from throwing said punch as he yelled out, what can she give you that I can't what is it that you want dope? At this line of questioning, the anger almost instantly evaporated from Naruto's face, as he gave a broad and knowing grin. The answer to both questions is pretty simple. I'll give you a hint. It's something that you once had that I never did. Naruto replied cryptically, wondering if the Achiha elite can guess what it was. The hell does that mean? What is it? Whatever it is, I'm sure I can get it. Sasuke spoke, but was surprised when the blonde simply shrugged. If you don't know what it is. Then I know for a fact you never appreciated it to begin with. We're done here. The whiskered teen stated as he turned on his heel and added, you can see yourself out now. Don't ever come back here again. Once those words had left his mouth, the Uchiha roared in anger after being so casually dismissed and denied and shoved the blonde to the ground. Naruto growled in anger. This was the last straw. He grabbed a fistful of dirt in his hand and spoke two things you're forgetting Sasuke. One, don't go starting fights you can't or won't finish. Second, this isn't an academy sparring ring with teachers supervising us and teaching fair play. He slowly rose to his feet and turned towards the Uchiha who had adopted his clan's Jutsu stance. What are you talking about dope? You've never once been able to beat me. Sasuke pointed out with a cocky and self-assured smile. True. But that was at the academy with that damned Aruka breathing down my neck. Remember that thing he always forced us to do? That seal of reconciliation. It was meant to symbolize that the two opponents are still comrades even after sparring. Only one problem. You are no comrade. Naruto shouted as he threw a fistful of dirt into Sasuke's face, the cloud of dust stinging the Ichiha's eyes, as he clasped his hands over them. 
Naruto then grabbed the Uchiha by the high collar of his shirt and slammed his forehead directly into the bridge of Sasuke's nose, creating a satisfying crunching noise. He then swung his knee directly into the family jewels of the Academy's golden boy, which caused a self-proclaimed Avenger to double over, giving the blonde the chance to throw him face first into the bench they had sat on, causing the raven-haired boy to slam hard against the metal armrest. While it was true that Naruto couldn't win in a straight-up fight against the Uchiha, given the elite's proficiency in his clans to jutsu and various fire techniques. The Uzumaki could still land a few shots on him if allowed to fight dirty. That was something that Aruka never did teach. That fair play is irrelevant in a life-or-death fight. You bastard. I'll kill you. I'll fucking kill you for this. Sasuke almost screeched as he used one hand to try and stem the bleeding from his nostrils and used the other to attempt to rub the dirt from his eyes. Yeah. Try it Sasuke. I promise you that it won't be like our academy days. I also promise that if you ever become between me and Asagi again, I'll take a red hot poker and burn your eyes out of their sockets. Won't be such a big shot without them, eh? And if that doesn't get you to leave me and Asagi alone, then I'll kill you. I swear it. Naruto promised in a cold and detached voice, an eerie gust of wind blowing past the two. Whoa. That was quite a display spoke a female voice, which prompted the blonde to turn and was met by the form of a woman with long waist-length light brown hair done in a heim cut who was wearing a bright pink skin-tight bodysuit. Who are you? The whiskered teen asked while ignoring the Uchiha screaming behind him. The brown-haired girl made a grand gesture and a salute that made her large breasts jiggle a bit as she answered Kakawa Asuka, at your service. Asagi asked me to check in and keep an eye on you. Though it looks like you have it handled. The Jinchuriki quickly recognized her name as he parroted Kakawa Asuka the Steel Reaper. At the mention of her famous epithet, the brown-haired girl quickly nodded with a beaming smile. According to what he had heard, Asuka was a famous Taimanin with some regarding her as something of an idol. She was unofficially adopted as Asagi's daughter and apprentice. Asuka lost all four of her limbs in battle, but that didn't deter her, as her limbs were replaced with special prosthetics that held blades hidden within them. The one and only. I think you had better get back to your bowling game. Asagi's getting real worried about you. I'll take care of the trash for you, as a special favor. Asuka spoke with a bubbly expression and giving the blonde a wink. Naruto couldn't tell if she was just being friendly or if she was flirting with him, but she still seemed like a good person either way. Appreciate it. I'll make it up to you later Asuka-san. He promised with an appreciative grin and then began to walk away. Do you think this is over? Not by a long shot. Just wait. I know people. Sasuke shouted, which earned a raised eyebrow from the Yuzumaki which reminded him of something. One of those people. Their name happened to be Hamura Mitakado. Naruto asked, wondering if this incident was connected with what happened with Sakura when she initially greeted him with hostility. The Achiha didn't answer as he simply spat at the blonde's feet. Whatever. I'll find out sooner or later. The blonde promised with a small snarl as he gestured towards Asuka. She nodded and kicked the Achiha across the jaw, knocking him unconscious as she dragged him away towards the Taimanin district's gates to toss him out. As the Jinchuriki made his way back to the community center, he couldn't help but wonder why people just couldn't leave him be and let him be happy. It was almost as if someone or several someones were trying to control every aspect of his life. Or was that just his imagination? Was he just being self-centered and selfish? He wasn't sure exactly. But one thing he did know was that he enjoyed being with Asagi. She made him happy. And anyone who tried to force them apart would pay very dearly. Within the Taimanin's community center, the Igawa sisters were currently neck and neck with the mother-daughter pair of Shiranyui and Yukikas. The elder Igawa sister was having difficulty concentrating on the bowling match as she felt deeply concerned for her partner. While she knew that Asuka would be able to handle the situation, she couldn't help but feel a sense of dread. Kami, she should have gone herself for crying out loud. At least then she could have seen with her own eyes whether or not Naruto was okay. Her musing was broken as she heard a familiar voice say yo. I miss anything. Asagi turned and felt relief to see Naruto once again, she then noticed that it appeared he had been in a scuffle, though didn't look seriously hurt. Naruto. What happened? The almighty Taimanin asked as she stepped forward and began dusting off his clothes with her sister and the mother-daughter pair giving concerned looks. Sasuke happened. He tried to buy me off so that I would leave you. I said no so he pushed me. I guess he thought I'd roll over like a whip dog or something as most everyone else does for him. Then I gave him a few good shots before Asuka-san showed up. Thanks for sending her along by the way. The Yuzumaki explained as he sat down to take a sip of soda to quench his thirst. Asagi accepted his thanks, then questioned Sasuke wanted you to leave me. Why? I don't think I've ever seen him show any signs of interest in a female before. At her question, the whiskered teen answered, he only wanted to pair up with you because of Itachi. I think that maybe someone had tipped him off about your history with him or something. 
I asked him if that Hamura guy had told him, but he didn't say anything. Ugh. That old fart again. Still causing trouble after he used that fake summons to bring me back. Sakura grumbled as she crossed her arms beneath her bust. Eh? What did you say? What fake summons? Naruto asked since he didn't remember the orange tea mentioning that part. Hmm? Oh. Didn't I tell you? That Hamura creep summoned me back to Kanoha by forging a summons with the Hokage seal on it. The tomboy came in and explained matter-of-factly, earning a raised eyebrow from her elder sister. Hamura forged a summons. With the Hokage's seal. Asagi asked for the sake of confirmation to ensure her ears weren't deceiving her. Um. Yeah. Didn't I mention that? Sakura asked while scratching her cheek with a lone finger, while silently asking herself if she had neglected to mention that part. I think you might have accidentally left out that detail. The Jinchuriki stated bluntly. This piece of information earned a deep scowl from the almighty Taimanen. Forging such a document, with the Hokage's seal no less, is tantamount to treason. Sakura. Did the Sand Aim not do anything to punish Hamura for his conduct? The elder sister asked, prompting the younger sister to shake her head negatively. Wait. Back up. Can somebody fill us in? I'm confused here. Yukika's requested with her mother giving a look of both curiosity and confusion. Asagi quickly explained the situation, detailing Sakura mistaking Naruto for a gold digger due to Hamura's interference. Now it seems Sasuke was also trying to separate the almighty Taimanen from her chosen partner. Eh, that's scumbag. How dare he. This is Taimanen business. He doesn't have any right to mess with such things. The young lightning Taimanen growled while pulling out a pair of pistols as she added, I'm going to find this Hamura guy, and then I'm gonna blast him into so many pieces, not even the buzzards and the rats will find them all. Whoa. Cool. You use guns. Naruto questioned since he had planned to learn how to use firearms. At his question, Yukikas proudly puffed out her chest and playfully twirled her pistols around her fingers with practiced ease. Heh. <laughs> Not just any guns. These are special. Custom built just for me. I use these to channel my ability to manipulate electricity, often in the form of energy bullets. Very nasty. He. She explained with a flourish as the whiskered teen clapped his hands, clearly impressed by the display. Hamura. I bet you and your old teammate Kaharu are behind all this. I'll need to have words with the Sandame. This cannot stand. Asagi quietly thought to herself. She would be handling this one personally. She refused to allow these people to continue harassing her and Naruto like this. Naruto. I am going to have a word with the Sandame about all of this and get everything straightened out. You have fun. I'll be back later. Sakura will take care of you. Asagi spoke, earning a nod of understanding from the whiskered teen. I got it. Thanks. Do you need anything from me? He asked, earning a shake of the head from the blue net. No. Thank you though. Just enjoy yourself. You deserve to have some fun. She spoke in a reassuring tone before planting a quick peck on his cheek before departing. All the while trying to hide her killing intent. Sakura quickly sidled up to the Yuzumaki and pulled him into a one-armed hug, which caused his head to press up against one of her large breasts, looks like it's you and me Naruto-kun. As Asagi told you, your new big sis Sakura-sama is gonna take good care of you. Your wish is now my command. She stated with a broad grin and a giggle. Don't forget, we still have a game to finish. One last set to be exact. It was Asagi's turn. So that means you'll be bowling in her stead Naruto-kun. Shiranyui stated with a small smile. The blonde teen checked the scoreboard and it seemed like he would need at least a spare to win the game. No worries. I can handle this. The whiskered teen declared with a grin as he cracked his knuckles, eager to forget about that nasty encounter with the Achiha and instead focus on having a good time. He picked up an orange bowling ball and rolled it down the center of the lane, the ball met its mark and knocked down most of the pins. With the exclusion of two. Crap. The dreaded seven and ten split. Sakura whined as two pins sat opposite of one another. Yesh. That's virtually impossible to beat. Unless you're lucky or skilled enough to make one pin knock the other over. Yukikas pointed out with an impish smirk, feeling confident that she and her mother had this in the bag. Naruto was a bit discouraged at this and felt that he'd let the Agawa sisters down. His gloom was quickly dispelled when Sakura came up behind him and gently rested her hands on his shoulders. Naruto-kun, it's okay. It happens to everyone. Even Asagi has been known to leave a 7 and 10 split behind. I'm sure you'll do fine. Now pick up the ball and give it a go. The orange tea encouraged. But the nod, the whiskered teen grabbed the ball and prepared to roll it. He took a deep breath and let the ball loose, aiming for the pin on the right. The ball rolled quickly down the lane, slowly veering a little off to the side. For a moment, everyone thought that the ball would miss the pin entirely, but instead struck it on the side, knocking it over into the other pin. Whoa hoo. Way to go Naruto-kun. Sakura cheered as she lifted the whiskered teen up and gave him a tight bear hug. 
The Yuzumaki blushed brightly and couldn't help but be a bit embarrassed by the affection, but also couldn't deny that he was enjoying the attention. I can't believe he managed to pull it off. Nice job Naruto-kun. Looks like you guys won. Shiranui conceded with a grin and a thumbs up. The Yuzumaki couldn't help but chuckle as he replied he. Thanks Shiranui-san. I had fun. What should we do next? Anything you want to try Naruto? The tan skin Taemin asked with her mother giving a gentle smile to the young blonde. I'm not sure. Any recommendations? He asked, directing the question to Sakura, wondering what she might pick. The tomboy Taemin thought for a moment and then suggested how about some ice skating. At that, the Uzumaki quirked up an eyebrow. Snow was exceptionally rare in Konoha since the weather was pleasant almost all year round. However, he was still quite curious about it and wanted to give it a try. I'm game if you are. He spoke excitedly, earning a small squeal of delight from the orange tea as she guided him towards another area that held an ice skating area. The place was a little chilly, but not unbearably so. After securing some skates and slipping them on, they entered the ring. Only for Naruto to discover that skating isn't as easy as it is depicted in the movies. Crap. Crap. Cryop. He muttered to himself as he struggled to find his balance. Sakura giggled at his predicament and placed a hand on his shoulder. Here. Let me help you. She offered and the Jinchuriki nodded, accepting the assistance. She then gently gripped his hand and gave him a smile, helping him find his balance, as she carefully guided him towards the edge of the ring, where the railing was located. It's best to start off along the wall to find your balance before trying to go towards the center. Just focus on trying to go forward for now. She advised, earning a nod from the Yuzumaki as he pushed himself forward. After a few moments, he was finally starting to find his rhythm and was even beginning to smile a little. See? You're doing great. Now come on and give me your hand. I'll help you. The orange tea spoke encouragingly as she stretched her arm out and grasped the blonde's hand. Naruto grinned and gripped the hand, allowing the older woman to carefully guide him across the rink. He had a small smile on his face, finding that this was actually a lot of fun. He chuckled with a merry expression on his face as he held Sakura's hand, a small blush on her face. His hand feels warm. And his smile. It makes me feel happy to see him smile. Is this? Is this how my big sister feels when she's with him? I wish I had that. The tomboy Taemin thought quietly to herself, wondering when she would find her ideal partner. In the background, the Mizuki family watched from a short distance, the mother and daughter duo watching both Sakura and Naruto. They look so happy together. One would think that they were partners. I wonder. Is that what it's like? To have someone to love and cherish. To have a worthy partner. Yukikis mused to herself, she was still young, but even she desired a partner for herself. It can be the most wonderful feeling in the world Yuki-chan. Shiranui stated with a nostalgic smile on her face as she observed Sakura supporting Naruto and guiding him along the ice. It kind of reminded her of. Of. Happier times. She quickly shook her head to shrug off any depressing thoughts and put on a joyful smile as she and her daughter skated across the ice as well. After all, Shiranui wanted to ensure that everyone had a good time and not drag them down with her own pain and inner turmoil. Meanwhile. Hokage office. Hiruzen leaned back in his seat, sighing tiredly to himself after having finally finished all of his paperwork for the day. Honestly, who would have guessed that signing scraps of paper could be so damned exhausting? He reached over towards where he kept his favored pipe, but was interrupted when the door to his office burst open, almost making him jump out of his seat. He then saw the form of Asagi, dressed in her signature purple bodysuit and armed for battle with her katana. Her eyes were cold and sharp as a razor as she strolled in, her heels clicking against the floor. Ah. Asagi Dono. Welcome. How are things with Naruto? How has he been adjusting to living with you? I trust he hasn't given you any trouble. He spoke in a friendly manner, trying to ease the tension in the air. I am not here to mince words or have a casual conversation. I am here to make things quite clear. Take responsibility and control your people. She spoke in a grave and demanding tone, earning a raised eyebrow from the sand aim. I beg your pardon? He questioned, unsure exactly what she meant. Unless. Your teammate Hamura forged a summons with the Hokage's seal, yes. Is that not an act of treason? Why has he not been punished then? In fact, he told outright lies to my little sister and tricked her into almost assaulting my partner Naruto, under the pretext that he was a gold digger or something of the like. Just recently, Sasuke Chiha came and demanded to see us, when Naruto went to find out what he wanted, Sasuke demanded Naruto to break up with me, and even tried to bribe him after discovering my history with Itachi. I suspect this might have also been some sort of ploy by one or both of your teammates, or maybe other involved parties. She explained, sharing the detail of recent and past events. Do you have proof behind these accusations? I grant that Hamura did use the Hokage's seal but. 
The sand aim spoke but was silenced when Asagi tapped her finger against the top of his desk, making it almost shatter, and exploded into a shower of splinters before the aged Hokage's eyes. But. But. But nothing. You are the Hokage. Your job is to protect the village, enforce its laws and act as a guiding hand. A leader. Yet it seems you are content to let many things slide. It is no wonder many people are calling you things like softer senile. She spoke in clear irritation, her presence now almost dominating the room as the sandame felt, but a bare inch tall in her presence, as she seemed to tower over him. If you cannot or will not control your people, then I shall handle things my way. This is your only warning. If this harassment continues or if you will not take action, then I shall have no choice but to declare my own candidacy as Hokage. She announced as she crossed her arms beneath her impressive bust. You? As Hokage. You never wanted to become Hokage. Here is in blubbered in astonishment. Was she being serious? Not once had Asagi ever expressed any interest in taking the Hokage mantle. True. I was never interested in taking a title that has practically lost its meaning. However, it seems that my hand has been forced. If it is for Naruto-kun's sake, I can and will become Hokage. Or do I need to give you a reminder of why I am called the Almighty Taimanin? She asked the last part, almost rhetorically. She didn't give the sand aim a chance to answer as she caused the yakai within her body to flare up, the result created a powerful shockwave that blasted the roof off of the Hokage tower and caused all the windows to shatter as cracks formed in the walls, with some sections throughout the tower collapsing entirely from the pressure. Hiruzen was currently on the ground, sweating, his body felt as though it were being crushed and found himself unable to breathe. Then, the pressure was gone and he was able to breathe once again. There was no mistaking it. Asagi had just flexed a portion of her strength to make her point. It was often believed that her strength is so vast that not even the entire village would be enough to hold her back should she truly unleash her full power. It is no wonder that she is dubbed Almighty. Out of respect to you, I shall give you this one chance and one warning. Clean up your act as soon as possible and keep control over your people. Or else. She warned him once more before turning on her heel and leaving the sand aim alone to absorb her words. However, despite her warnings, she believed that he wouldn't be able to follow through. Hiruzen was old and weak and had lost his spine. Spent too many years pushing papers, glad handing, and playing politics. Too set in his ways to adapt to the times, trying to continue old and antiquated ideals that had no place in the real world. Everyone knew that the old man was soft. One could see it in how he handles his students. Arachimaru. A rogue ninja who was still very much at large. Jiraiya. A perverted peeping tom that is infamously known to spy on women and sexually harass them with no real consequences, and a worthless spy master. Tsunade. Wasting her talents by drinking and gambling and racking up more and more debt. If the sand aim cannot handle his own students, how can one expect him to even handle a village? Hell, the only reason he did anything about Aruka was because it was a knee-jerk reaction due to the massive media coverage. The warning she had provided him was but a mere courtesy. It was now time to make preparations for a new Hokage. Asagi had always been content to serve as a soldier and guardian for the village, trying her best to distance herself from the politics. However it seems that it was time for a different approach. Now may be a good idea to call up some old friends and cash in some old debts. Meanwhile. With Naruto. Naruto yawned tiredly as he stretched his limbs, feeling kind of tuckered out after having so much fun with Sakura and the Mizukas. It was really nice playing with you both. I hope we can do it again sometime. He spoke to the mother and daughter duo who nodded their heads in agreement. Most definitely. You can count on it. Yukikas responded with a smile as her mother rested a hand on her shoulder. It was nice spending some time with you, Naruto-kun. Hopefully, we can spend more time with each other again. Shiranui spoke warmly as Sakura wrapped an arm around the Jinchuriki's shoulder. The motherly Taimanin felt that it was a good thing for her daughter to connect with someone closer to her age and make a new friend, especially since Naruto seemed to be a good kid. Come on, Naruto-kun. We'd better get home. Besides, we can always come back some other time and hang out. Don't want you to get tired out too much. We wouldn't want to have you collapse from exhaustion. The orange tea playfully teased, causing the whiskered teen to chuckle a bit. Right. He replied curtly and then bid goodbye to both Yukikas and Shiranui as he and Sakura made their way back home to the Agawa residence. Along the way, Naruto looked up at the night sky and found himself thinking about Asagi and wondered what she might be up to. She said she was going to have a word with the sand aim, but she wasn't back yet. Ah well, she would come home when she was ready and able to do so. Whatever she was doing, he was certain that it must be of great importance. He was probably getting worried over nothing. Sakura took notice of his distraction and couldn't help but wonder what the Jinchuriki was thinking about, most likely it involved her elder sister. She knew that Naruto and her sister had a close bond. In fact, she had witnessed some of their intimacy together and 
It made her envious. To have someone that special in her life and to be able to be loved by such an amazing person. Even so, she didn't want to get in their way. They seemed to click very well together. Still, she couldn't bear the thought of him being sad or upset, so she decided to help cheer him up and distract him. Hey. Hey. Naruto-kun. When we get home, how about we do something a bit more lax? We could watch a movie together or play video games. Do you like video games? She questioned in a bubbly tone. I never played any. Couldn't afford luxuries like that given how limited my stipend was. Though I certainly wouldn't mind trying. When I first entered your home, I noticed that there was a Taman and themed game. He replied with a small smile. Oh yeah. That. He. I think you like it. I'd love to teach you how to play games. Asagi isn't very good at them. The orange tea spoke with a playful smile. You know. I'm really glad to have met you. You're kinda like the big sister I never had. Naruto said suddenly, causing Sakura to freeze up, feeling her heart skip a beat. Why yeah. Same here. I'm glad to have met you too. She replied, trying to play off the moment. However. She couldn't help but wish that he could view her more than as a big sister. Kami, what is wrong with me? I haven't known him that long, but I wanna. No. I can't do that to my sister. She deserves to be happy. It'd be wrong of me to take her partner away. But it still stings. She thought quietly to herself, and then within a split second she put on a happy face for the blonde. When they arrived at their home, they discovered a variety of packages left behind at the front door, all of them marked with the prison battleship store's logo. Ah. This must be my stuff. Naruto spoke excitedly, happy that his things had arrived rather quickly. He was kind of eager to try out his new suits and gear. Ooh oh. Come on. Let's get it all inside. Double quick. The tomboy Taemin spoke as she unlocked the door for them both, and the two quickly brought the various packages inside. Naruto attempted to lift some crates that were marked ammunition on them, but found himself unable to make them budge. Lem help. Sakura spoke and then easily balanced three crates in each hand and brought them inside, the display of strength made the Yuzumaki feel slightly inadequate. But he shrugged it off and reminded himself that he just needed to start training diligently, so that he could become strong too. Wow. So these are your combat suits, eh? She asked as she held up an all-black suit after removing it from its bag. She then offered it to him and spoke in an almost demanding voice try it on. Try it on. The whiskered teen chuckled and agreed since he was eager to try it on himself as he accepted the suit and disappeared from view in order to change. A few moments later, the Jinchuriki emerged now wearing his new suit, admiring how professional he looked in it. He was impressed at how there seemed to be no restriction of movement as he admired the range of motion. It also felt much lighter than his usual orange jumpsuit and more comfortable. Oh. My. Gosh. You look so handsome. Sakura spoke with a blush, admiring his new clothes, which fit the young blonde very well. He blushed a little at the praise as he replied thank you. I gotta say. I really like this. It fits me perfectly. I'd say that Rieri and Naomi outdid themselves. The whiskered teen noted at the end as he picked up another box and opened it, revealing the katana that Asagi had bought for him. Jackpot. He whispered as he picked the blade up and carefully removed it from its sheath. He gave it a quick practice swing and noted how light the blade felt. It was virtually weightless in his hand as he made a slow sweeping motion. Oh, I can't wait to practice with this. He stated with a smirk as he sheathed the katana. Ha. Hey, you'll have a hard time finding a better teacher for the arts of kinjutsu than my sister. She's a renowned swordswoman. Sakura stated matter-of-factly. I am definitely looking forward to training under her. He spoke as he set aside the blade and then added, but before we get into any serious training. I think I want to try my hand at some video games. Sakura gave a thumbs up, then advised him better put on your PJs because you're gonna want to get comfy. At her suggestion, he quickly nodded and collected his other suits before retreating to his and Asagi's room, where he changed into a set of orange fleece pajamas that had little foxes on them. Apparently Asagi found it cute, not that he was complaining. When he returned to the living room, he couldn't help but blush a bit when he found Sakura booting up the TV and game console, she was wearing a pair of tiny shorts and a dark brown tank top that left little to the imagination. It would seem Sakura didn't have much in the way of modesty. He tried not to stare, but it was quite difficult to do. She had a really nice ass, and the outline of her camel toe could be seen through her tight shorts, making his eyes dart around a bit. His pants felt a bit tighter now, and he was glad he was wearing a baggy set of pants or else she'd probably notice. He hoped his arousal wasn't too obvious. Crap. Stop staring Naruto. You're with Asagi. He mentally scolded himself as he sat down on the couch, all the while trying his best to avoid staring at the orange tea. However, what he didn't know was that the younger Igawa's sibling had taken notice of the look she was getting from him. Wait. Was he checking me out? Shoot. 
I guess to a guy I must be dressed pretty provocatively. Crud. I'm not used to having a guy in the house. Just play cool Sakura-chan. You're just gonna play video games with him. Everything will be fine. Just don't make a big fuss. Still. I kinda like that he's looking at me like that. Stop. Nope. Don't go there. I'm not gonna two-time my sister like that. The tomboy tamed and thought to herself as some pink coloring dusted her cheeks as she plopped herself down next to Naruto, all while trying to act casually as she sat next to him and handed him a controller. He accepted it and observed how the orange tea was holding her own as he tried to mimic her. Okay, now I'll teach you how to hold it and how to use the controls. She spoke softly as she gently reached over and moved his hands, showing him the correct way to hold the controller. Hami. Her hands feel really soft. He thought to himself as she gently guided him on how to hold the controller. She smells nice too. And her hair. So shiny. What the hell am I thinking? She's Asagi's little sister. Snap out of it Naruto. He scolded himself as he snapped himself out of his thoughts and listened to her instructions. Once Sakura was satisfied that he had the basics, she turned on the game. After a few moments of waiting and observing the opening credits, the title Taman in action. Flashed across the screen as Sakura hit start and took him to a tutorial screen so that he may engage in a practice match or two to get his feet wet. Okay, so the goal is pretty straightforward. You pick a character and then duke it out in a match. Best two out of three wins. The trick is to familiarize yourself with your chosen character, their combos, and their special abilities. She explained, prompting the Yuzumaki to nod in understanding. On the character selection screen, there were a number of various Taimanen to choose from. Some of which he recognized. Heck, even the Agawa sisters were playable characters on here. It didn't take him long to make his choice as he selected Asagi herself since she was his partner, plus he kind of wanted to see how she fraught inside of a game. Ooh. You chose Big Sis. She's a great character for beginners. Sakura spoke with a sly smile as the practice match began. For the next several minutes, the Jinchuriki familiarized himself with the controls as he fraught against a basic computer-controlled adversary that was using a certain treacherous Taimanen. The orange tea coached him the whole time, giving him tips and advice as he learned how to play the game. The first round ended with a win for Naruto's picked character, and the second round followed a similar result. He was a quick learner and was picking things up faster than expected. Once the practice match was finished, he felt a lot more confident in his ability to play. It was a good thing the controls were easy to learn and were quite intuitive. It also helped there was a list of moved in the pause menu that enabled him to memorize the various combos. With that said and done, it was time for both Naruto and Sakura to engage in a few rounds themselves. The two shared competitive looks and grins with one another as they started their first match. All the while, Naruto was grateful to both the Igawa siblings for giving him the chance to enjoy things that he had missed out on. He was very much looking forward to more experiences with the two sisters. Elsewhere. At a certain bar. Asagi sighed to herself as she took a long drink of rum. She was seated at the bar, her body language and her aura gave off a don't approach vibe. She was not in a very good mood. Most fortunately, everyone in the bar was wise enough to keep their distance or avoid pestering her. Asagi had a lot on her mind. She was feeling a mixture of emotions ranging from anger, sadness, happiness, joy, and love. Her thoughts kept drifting to the blonde Jinchuriki and how he was doing. She knew he was safe and in good hands with Sakura and she trusted her little sister, but, she was feeling kind of lonely without her partner by her side. However, what really concerned her was the almost unnatural vendetta people seemed to have against him. She could understand the fear and resentment towards Jinchuriki. They were essentially weapons of mass destruction, and if they were to go out of control, then there was no telling what the damage could be. Though at the same time, mistreating them was a surefire way to invite disaster. Honestly, it was as if people actually wanted him to snap so that they may have an excuse to be rid of him. Well now. Look who's here. Nice to see you Asagi. Spoke a familiar voice that the almighty Taimanen did not want to hear right now. Was it too much to ask to be able to enjoy a damn drink in peace? Oh wait Kakashi. She spoke in a warning tone, despite this, the copy ninja slid into the stool next to her anyway with a drink in his hand as he gave her his signature eye smile. Many would describe Asagi as being patient, mature, diligent and tolerable. However even she had her limitations to what she would and would not tolerate. Takashi was perhaps one of the few people she couldn't stand due to how unprofessional he could be with his tardiness, not to mention his vices. What's the matter, Asagi-chan? You sound rather angry. He teased with a slight chuckle, causing the blue-haired ninja's eyebrow to twitch slightly. It should also be mentioned that he also hits on her on occasion, and she does not appreciate his advances. Especially now that she had a partner. I am angry because there are people that keep messing with my partner. That aside, I am not in an entertaining mood either. 
least of all for a pervert that reads trashy smut in public. The bluenet growled angrily, the clock quickly ticking down as her patience ran thin. Your partner? Oh, right. Naruto. He's a bit young for you, don't you think? You never struck me as the type to go for younger guys. I know he's pretty cute and all, but he's hardly a man. Kakashi noted with a shrug. And I suppose you are? She countered. Well, I'm no boy. The copy ninja spoke in a half-joking and half-serious tone, which only served to further irritate the almighty Taemonin, as she let out an angry snarl, as she tightened her grip around her glass, which slowly cracked in her hand. Would you be saying such things if I was, say, partnered with Sasuke She asked him, her voice filled with venom, knowing full well that Kakashi had some sort of obsession with repaying his fallen teammate from whom he received his Sharingan eye. I I uh. Well. The silver-haired ninja stammered a bit, caught off guard by her sudden question, not knowing how to answer. You're no different than the rest, aren't you? I am getting really sick and tired of people glorifying that damned Ichiha like he is Kami's gift to the world while putting down poor Naruto. What did Naruto ever do to deserve this? What is wrong with all of you? It is his life. My life. Our lives. Can't you let us be happy together can't you just leave us alone? She screamed out in anger and frustration as she clenched her fist around her glass, causing it to shatter. Under normal circumstances, Asagi would keep her cool and maintain her composure. However. Even she could lash out if provoked enough. Now she had reached her breaking point. Why are you all so obsessed with that little Sasuke Brad anyway? What's so special about him? Do you think he's supposed to be some scion to recreate his clan? Am I to be some damn breeding mare to pop out his spawn? She questioned as she looked about the room, as if she were demanding answers from the various people within the bar. Many of the patrons either looked like they wanted to say something, but chose otherwise for the sake of self-preservation, or were trying to ignore the scene entirely. She scoffed in disgust and marched towards a particular patron that she recognized as belonging to a major news media outlet for Kanoha, and asked him, do you have a recorder on you? Why yes. Why do you ask? He replied nervously, feeling intimidated by the famous Taemonin. She only glared at him and made a small handed over gesture with her finger. Seeing the look in her eyes, the man quickly complied, not wanting to risk angering her further, and placed the recorder into her open palm. She clicked it on and began to record her own voice this is Asagi Agawa, going on the record. I am perfectly happy and content with Naruto Uzumaki as my partner. I will not be leaving him. I will not be accepting Sasuke Chiha as my partner. I refuse to procreate with Sasuke in a vain effort to revive a dead clan. I am not some breeding mare. If you all have a problem with it, then come and find me. I will be at home, with my blade at the ready to cut down anyone, and I do mean anyone who tries to come between us. This is your only warning. Further harassment will be met with both severe consequences and extreme prejudice. With that, the recording ended as she tossed the recorder back to its original owner, and then stomped her way out of the bar, leaving behind a stunned and silent crowd and a shocked Kakashi, who realized that he had basically fucked up. The blue net stormed her way through the streets, heading towards her home. Everything was a blur to her as she almost saw nothing but red. This whole situation was starting to get out of hand. If the Sandame didn't get his shit together within the next few days, then she would have to handle things her own way. Which might involve putting certain annoyances to the sword. She marched up to the gates of the Taemanin district and pulled out her passport in an almost automated manner, the guard, Murasaki, led her through in a rather hurried fashion, upon seeing the angry and distressed look upon the almighty Taemanin's face, the axe-wielding Taemanin looked like she wanted to ask Asagi if she was okay, but didn't get the chance as the famed Taemanin rushed on home. Upon reaching her house, she threw open the door and stomped her way into her living room. It was only then that she had come down from her anger-induced high and saw Naruto and Sakura both sitting on the couch playing a video game. Upon noticing the older Taemonin, both the blonde and orange tea paused their game and turned their heads to greet her. Naruto gave her a cheerful grin and asked her welcome home Asagi. You were gone for a while. Everything go okay with the Hokage. She grit her teeth for a moment before relaxing herself, willing herself to be calm as she replied honestly. Things could be better. What happened? He asked, noting the look on her face, her expression and body language seemed to tell him that she was not in a good mood. There are a lot of idiots in Kanoha, Naruto. That's all I'll say for now. At any rate, you two go on back to your game. I think I need to lie down for a while. Asagi muttered, feeling more tired now that her anger was draining away. Well. Alright. If you're sure. Sakura's teaching me how to play. We've been at it for a few hours. And I'm having a lot of fun. Naruto explained with a grin as the blue net gave him a nod and a small smile, feeling grateful to her younger sister for looking after him and keeping him entertained. It was good that Sakura was so quick to accept him. The whiskered teen then added if you ever want to talk, I'm willing to listen. Let you vent out your frustrations. Thanks Naruto. 
I'll take you up on that offer. Though for now, rain check. She answered, her smile growing a bit wider as she appreciated his words of support before departing towards her bedroom. Both Naruto and Sakura watched her leave with the blonde letting out a sigh of disappointment and worry. The younger Gawa's sibling patted him on the shoulder and gave him a reassuring smile, silently telling him not to worry and that everything would be okay. He returned the gesture with a smile of his own, finding her to be a very sweet girl. Once they were left alone again, Sakura picked up the game controller and said so. Want to continue playing? Or would you rather do something else? Let's go another round. Afterwards, I think I'll go to bed myself. He spoke the last part, believing that it wouldn't be a good idea for Asagi to be all alone for long. Even if she didn't want to talk, it would be good to at least stay silently by her side to let her know he was there for her. Yeah. Same. Sakura muttered, feeling a little jealous that the blonde would be joining Asagi's bet instead of her own. Kami, why was this kid growing on her so fast? Was it because of his kind and loving nature? Was it because she craved what her sister had? Was it something else? A combination of these things. She didn't know. But she couldn't help these feelings growing inside of her. Sakura was not like her sister, who was the more reserved one, who was the calm one, who was the responsible one. No. Sakura was the more hot-headed of the two. The one that tended to wear her heart on her sleeve, and when she saw something she liked, she went after it. Though in this instance, what she wanted was already claimed by her sister. The orange tea forced a smile to her face as they engaged in a final round together, their match seemed a blur to the tomboy Taemanin, as she found it hard to focus on the game. After the round was finished, the orange tea bid the blonde a good night as she departed towards her room. Once inside, the young Kinoichi shut the door and slid her back down against the wooden frame as she looked around her bedroom. Her thoughts once again returned to the blonde Jinchuriki as she thought to herself he's not supposed to be that adorable. Why do I feel this way? Why did it have to be big sis and not me? I want someone to love me too. Am. Am I a bad sister? She thought to herself, feeling more and more guilty for wanting something that was her sister's. It felt wrong to want her sibling's partner for herself, and it wouldn't be fair to any of them to ask Naruto to choose between them. She sighed as she flopped on her bed and stared at the ceiling. Perhaps it would be best to sleep this off. Meh. It was just a stupid feeling. A childish crush. She'd feel better later and get over it. Right. Later that night. Sakura tossed and turned in her bed, her body covered in a sheen of sweat, as she found herself unable to sleep. Her body growing hotter as her thoughts lingered on the young Yuzumaki. She bit her lip as certain. Intrusive thoughts filled her mind. She sighed as she tossed the covers off and decided that she was unable to wait any longer. She needed to quench this thirst she had to cool off this burning desire in her heart. She swallowed a lump in her throat and crept towards her big sister's room and peeked through the door, finding her big sister fast asleep, while the whiskered teen seemed a bit restless as he seemed. Busy beneath the sheets. No surprise that he needed to relieve some tension since he was sleeping next to a damn hot babe like her sister, not to mention there was the fact he was still a teenager with raging hormones. He was supposed to be 15 right? She smirked as she found herself with an opportunity to give him a little tip to her way inside and smoothly climbed into her sister's bed without making so much as a sound. The young blonde looked up at her and mouthed what are you doing? In response to his question, she put a finger to her lips to tell him to be quiet. Sakura reached down and cupped his groin through the covers, feeling the large bulge beneath the sheets, as she softly cooed don't worry Naruto-kun. Asagi doesn't have to know. Just let your new big sis Sakura take care of you. I think you want my juicy tomboy tits, don't you? She slowly peeled the covers back, her face reddening as she found herself becoming hot and bothered. Then stopped midway, a sudden sense of guilt overcoming her. What was she even doing? This was all kinds of wrong. I. I'm. I'm sorry. This. This was a mistake. I shouldn't be doing this. She whispered apologetically. Then she saw it. Her sister was awake, staring at her, silently accusing her. Asagi's eyes burned with contempt, unable to decide whether to scream at her or beat her within an inch of her life. I can't do this. I can't do this. Sakura whispered to herself as she clenched her eyes shut and started to curl into a ball. I can't do this. She screamed out loud as she jolted forward. It took a few moments for it to register. But she then realized that she was not in Asagi's bedroom, but in her own. Her body covered in sweat with the sheets and her clothes sticking to her. It. It was just a nightmare. Thank Kami. I thought I legit did something I was gonna regret. She whispered to herself as she tried to wipe some of the sweat from her forehead. She glanced towards a clock and discovered that it was now morning time. There was a knock at her door as she heard her sister call out Sakura. Is everything okay? We heard you scream. There. It's nothing Asagi. I just had a bad dream. The orange tea replied truthfully, though obviously left out what she had dreamed about. 
Were you watching scary movies late at night again? I told you to stop doing that because they'll give you nightmares. Don't tell me, was it the one with the masked cannibal chainsaw guy? Asagi questioned through the door, voicing her obvious disapproval to late night horror movies. Something like that. The younger sister answered half heartedly with a small grimace. I see. Well, get dressed. Naruto is cooking breakfast for us. Asagi spoke as her footsteps could be heard retreating away from the younger sibling's door. The orange tea nodded to herself as she got up from her bed and then looked herself in the mirror, now feeling more ashamed of herself than ever. What is wrong with you? She asked her own reflection, as if searching for an answer. Though she received none as she sighed to herself. No matter what, she couldn't let either Naruto or Asagi know about this. But how long could she pretend to hide her feelings? She wasn't sure. Perhaps some breakfast could help cheer her up. Wait. Breakfast. Naruto was cooking breakfast. He could cook. Well now. She was kind of looking forward to trying out his cooking. Elsewhere. Location unknown. Well now. This is interesting. Spoke a woman with wine red hair as she read the morning newspaper with the front page's headline reading Almighty Taimanen, Asagi Agawa, releases official statement. Confirms partnership with Sasuke Chiha is not happening. The woman smirked as she leaned against the padded wall of her cell, feeling a certain sadistic satisfaction that an entire clan and bloodline was facing extinction. Never did like those Ichihas. Though given their track record, I suppose the late Nadame's suspicions of them were justified, no. The woman asked as she looked up towards a grizzled old man covered in bandages, a disapproving look on his face as he glowered at the woman. Be silent. The bandaged man ordered in a gruff tone, feeling annoyed by the prisoner's insolence. Oh, come on. You're no fun. So tell me, what's this about a young Taman and a Jinchuriki, hmm? She asked him with a little grin. It was no secret that the Kaiubi was the source of the Yakai that created the Taimanin. But for a Taimanin to pair with the very Jinchuriki that contained the beast itself. Ooh, just what sort of chaos could that cause? Not your concern, woman. He spoke venomously, his lone visible eye glaring at her. Oh, come now Danzo. Don't be such a spoil sport. I'm curious though. Why did you come to see little old me? Come to admire the view? See a little skin. Sorry honey, but I'm not into the golden oldies like you. I prefer something a little on the younger side. Unless you're here to finally silence me. You're not still made after that little fiasco in Kumo, are you? The crimson-haired woman spoke in a mocking and haughty manner, dripping with some overconfidence as well. The old warhick replied coldly, do not tempt me a borrow. Eliminating you is still very much on the table, especially given that you sold certain secrets without my permission. Secrets? What secrets? I haven't sold any secrets. Though I do have quite the collection of secrets to tell. Your little fronts at the orphanages that secretly funnel you recruits. Your past dealings with Hanzo and Rajimaru. Your blackmailing Itachi to be the triggerman to eliminate his own clan. Your illegal business practices. The maps to your underground tunnel networks. Oh, and that freaky Senju Ichiha fetish you have. Why would I sell what is currently keeping me alive? If I go, then your secrets get publicized. Abora responded cheekily, since she had quite a bit of ammunition to use against the grizzled Warhick. Secrets were her trade, her currency and lifeblood. It was also why she was known as the treacherous Taimanen. Unfortunately for her, she had gotten in a little over her head and was cast into this prison by Danzo himself. Now she was too dangerous to let live, but also too valuable to kill. Quite the conundrum for poor old Danzo, especially since he didn't like loose ends. Ask all the double agents he had quietly terminated and betrayed. Ugh. It was a shame that it wasn't the sand aim that caught her, with Hiruzen she could easily batter pretty little eyelashes, make up an excuse, and then be sent on her way with a little slap on the wrist. Danzo. Different story. Perhaps we can have some form of a compromise. Tell me. What do you know about a man called Edwin Black? Danzo asked with a raised eyebrow, tossing a file at Abora's feet. Oh? Digging into the story of a dead man, are we? I have some pretty juicy secrets about Edwin too. They can be yours. For a price. Perhaps I can trade up for a nicer cage. Something less. Confining. She asked, gesturing to the cramped padded cell that she was currently occupying, it would be very nice to be able to stretch her legs a bit. Perhaps. Though if you try to run, I know of a few secrets of yours as well. The kind that could have every Anbu from every village after you, and a lot of angry clients who wouldn't wish to do further business with you. He spoke in a warning tone, earning an annoyed roll of the eyes from the treacherous Damon. That would be quite. Inconvenient. Very well then. What do you wish to know? She asked as she flipped the file of Edwin Black open with a lone finger. Everything. Starting with his experiments. Danzo requested with his lone eye narrowing, which resulted in Aboru giving him a crooked grin, knowing that the many secrets she held could open a great many doors for her. That aside. She was bored and she hated being bored. 
who knows. It might be fun to shake things up a bit and see how the chaotic fallout unfolds. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.